Okay, good evening and welcome to GPWC 2012 Super League here at Road America. You join us at the end of the practice session where we have James Shepard fastest on a 32.8. I believe the lap times will be a lot faster than that in qualifying. But he leads the way in practice from Tom Parker, surprisingly in second position in the Woods Racing Car. Rude Histerbeek third, Dave Kasmith fourth, James, M yeah, sorry, James Jason Muscat fifth, Simon Cattell sixth, Lucas Euler seventh, David Junt in eighth position, Lewis Redshaw ninth and Matt Clip rounding out the top ten. Uh, the practice was very, very close. Uh, alongside me tonight we have Phil Cullum, who has also joined me, uh, decided to join me tonight, uh, thankfully, and give me some assistance in the commentary. And we also have Simon Mellowish who is doing the cameras, so thank you to both of them and welcome Phil. Thanks, Lee. And just to start off, but there's a few bits of notes I'm making up there during um, the practice session. First off, um, in terms of some missing drivers here tonight, there's no OJ Clark for Red Archer, which would be a bit of a shame probably up the front given the fact that OJ has been challenging the uh, for the front runners at least in qualifying so it'll be a shame not to see him we are quite sure actually, sorry I can actually answer that now uh, Dave Stones will be in there tonight as I just see Jason Muscat leave the server so um, he'll be in the second red arch tonight we also don't have Ben Warren in for Nijo Racing he was a late puller so Chris Williamson will at least the car don't know now if it's going to be like the Norberg ring where he just did one lap and he came in so we'll have to see on that and also Mark Fuller is not driving for ST Racing we have Jeff Mead in for him we also have two teams absent so far they could show up now by the end of qualifying but we'll have to see uh, there's no representatives for Synergy Egg Morse Force which is not a big surprise the way that team's been going as of yet and there's no drag racing car now we had heard rumours that maybe their drivers had left them and they have also been disqualified from the last few races since the Belgian Grand Prix because they've had five drivers under contract and as the rules state you can only have four drivers at any one time under contract so their result from Belgium, from Zandvoort uh, and from the last race in the Nürburgring have been disqualified so there's no representative here tonight and it does lead a lot of things to about whether that team will be on the grid next year. So that's all the uh, news and updates as we head into qualifying. Yeah, thank you very much for that, Phil. Uh, good information there for us tonight to feed on. As you know, the qualifying session is 15 minutes long, and the cars are now heading out on track, leading the way is Tom Parker, who was second fastest in the free practice session, uh, trying to give Woods some sort of revival this season. It's been another, well, I wouldn't say mediocre. They've had some decent results now and again, showing a bit of pace, but never really had the consistency to, to mount a serious challenge for, a, let's say, a top six every now and again, because they, they keep uh, surprising us every now and again with a few good qualifying performances, and they're uh, flattered to deceive in the races, let's say. Um, just coming into the qualifying session as well, uh, just just obviously the news from Drake, uh, obviously being involved with Drake myself, I can also back up a little bit on that as well. I know Keith basically just resigned from the team completely because he was just... I mean, I used to help him out a little bit before the races, let's say. Uh, even though I wasn't part of Drake, I used to cause I get on well with Keith, he's a personal friend. Uh, he basically just resigned from the team because the communication that he, was, he, well, he wasn't receiving from Mike Phillips, the team boss who took back over the team, it was just non it was just non-existent. There was no communication or nothing, and it, it basically also makes sense as to why the cars got disqualified because he just didn't even know what he was doing with the team as such. I mean, he's looking at having five cars, let's say, like you said, five cars entered for the race, only allowed four. I mean, that's that's just basics, isn't it? He should be getting that sort of thing right. And um, unfortunately, like you say, maybe not be on the grid next year, which would be a shame. But it would also open up for some new teams who are going to be more competitive. Yes, definitely. I mean, it's, it's just simple little things. As you said, with five drivers, it, it's it's written down there, four drivers. And it has been for a four-driver limit for so long. And even when you do look at the drivers that they have under contract, it's easy to see you could one or two, because I haven't seen one of them in particular on the track, I think, in months. And it's not that hard to just drop a contract. And obviously, it's going to cost them. I think in terms of results, it'll only change the race in Spa because I believe one of them scored points in that race. So they finished outside the points in the following race. So that's the only one where it would have made a difference in that regard. But still, for, for a team that was challenging for the championship last year and was expected this year, it's, we talk about you know, how Norton have struggled this year. But the fall of Drake has been, it hasn't been pretty to see. and. Like you say, it, it's. I would say I would agree with you on the uh, the communication front. Obviously, since you've left Drake, it it has come apart, and obviously, how interested Mike is in the whole operation now anymore is um, 
it's, I think it's pretty pretty plain to see now out there. I mean, I, I left the team on good terms in some respects. I I tried to set them up as best. It was always going to happen. I knew in my mind I wouldn't finish the season with them because I didn't want to. I didn't have the motivation for it anymore. What that may have been, I mean, I couldn't get the race wins, and fair enough. I wanted to set my own team up. I wanted to go my own direction. But I, I, I left them on good terms. I left them with a decent budget for next year. I left them with good upgrades, you know, for next year and so on. And he's basically just changed that completely now, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, he's put upgrades on the car, which is a complete waste of time because the cars have been disqualified anyway. So he's going to get nothing back from that. And the only effect uh, you said was on the Spa Grand Prix. But Dale Carrick, unfortunately, did drive really well in that race to get an eighth position. Uh, and that, that doesn't count for anything now, so a real shame. Uh, the first times are coming anyway, Cattell sets the fastest time so far on a 1.32.1, not beaten by James Shepard, who also does a 32.1 actually. The fastest time I've seen so far on the listings was a 31.5 from James Shepard. Whether, whether it was legit or not, I am not sure. Uh, currently 32.1 is the fastest. Uh, one thing I just want to quickly run down before the action really heats up in qualifying. Uh, obviously we're at the Road America circuit. Uh, in the few moments time, I'll do have an onboard lap with you with a, a random driver we'll, we'll pick in a few moments time. We'll, we'll do that uh, in a few minutes time. I just want to quickly run down the uh, championship order. Uh, well, the top 10 at least. Anyway, Lucas Weiler leads the way, as I'm sure you all know by now. On 171 points from Nick Rowland, his teammate, the Midnight still locking out the first two positions in the championship. But now 34 points, the gap between them. Dave Carr-Smith looking on in third position to take the second position of Nick Rowland, especially on his current form. Uh, a win tonight would really assist him in his uh, challenge for second position. I am currently in fourth, but we'll just ignore that for now. James Shepard is fifth. Rudy to speak. OJ Clark, Simon Cattell, Joe Consiglio, who no longer races, still inside the top 10 actually. And Yanni Tanskinen rounds out the top 10, who also uh, we haven't seen for quite some time. Uh, we do have Dave Carr Smith coming across the start and finish line now, and I believe you are on board with him currently. So we're heading down the main straight now. I do have a track map up for this, and we'll read off that. So as he heads now into turn one, the fast right hander flat out almost through uh, turn one there for Dave. He's very, very quick through there. This car handling really well as you can see. And the next round, this is turn turn three now, we're sorry, we're coming up. Turn two is a little kink in the middle actually, which is quite strange. Now a long, long back straight. This is Moraine Sweep, I believe it's called, and it's an extremely long straight, reaching an excess well, he's doing a ridiculous top speed there. That's 213 he topped out there pretty much. So Dave Carsmith really got some good top speed in that car. The turn five left handing out, keep it nice and tidy as he's done. Now into turn six, another 90 degree, two 90 degree corners there. Now a flat out right under turn seven onto the hurry downs section into the left hand of turn eight now you go into a little bridge and then we head into one of the most famous parts of the circuit the carousel a long sweep, sweeping right hander not full throttle you have to back off middle as he does drops down the gear actually and back on the throttle nice and hard and a scruffy scruffy carousel there from Dave gets on the grass on the inside this is going to compromise him through the famous kink corner many accidents happened for here in the past and very big accidents because it's a very high speed corner onto the kettle bottoms straight curving left all the way into the right hander Canada corner braking hard into second gear hard on the power now through Thunder Valley now the left right we go left right and into the final corner this is the Bill Mitchell Ben we've just gone through into the final corner turn 14 onto the Road America straight we head uphill now very very steep incline now as you come over there underneath the bridge look like you're going to hit the bridge for a second there but you're not possibly taking off in some cars but not in these he's flat out and he moves up into P5 on a 32-3 and James Shepard has done a 31-1 to go fastest uh, Lucas Weiler currently second on a 31-4 Phil yeah, and I just noticed as you were doing that lap there with Dave as he came out of the last corner, Pavel Lugnovsky has stopped over at the last corner, but he's going to get a push now from um, Tom Parker. Um, I'm not sure whether he blew the engine there now or he ran out of fuel, but um, Tom Parker being very neighbourly, not even to his teammate, to give him a push up the hill to get him back up. He has to bring the car back to pit lane. To, oh! And yeah, I'm never Ryan a fan of this. I'm him. sorry, oh, but I'm never dear. a fan of this. This is so unprofessional oh. looking. I hope we're not watching this. Um, I really do hope we're not watching this uh, because it's so unprofessional. I, I, I really, if I, whenever I'm doing the broadcast and I see something like that, I don't even mention it because I really do not like that sort of thing at all. It's just so unprofessional looking. You wouldn't see that in real life. Uh, I think Nick and Dave did it at Silverstone, and I was, I was completely against it. There's nothing wrong with it, I guess, but I was complete. I mean, look at that. Nick's just hit a piece of that. Now that's going to cost him slightly because he's going to have some damage from that accident now. Just totally unacceptable in my eyes. It should be banned from the league or the leagues. I know it, FSR it, banned it. it. Well, it will be. I know it's, it's on the list. There's, there's a... Yeah, it's 
Yeah, I'm really not sure what's going on in the mind of some people. Tom Parker's just had an accident at Turn 1. That's his qualifying over, Tom Parker. So, you know, he had a good chance there of doing a good job. He's, he's currently in seventh. That will change. Dave Casmith goes fastest and a 131.0. So, obviously, he hooked it up this time through the carousel. We saw on board last time round. He got a little bit sideways. We'll focus more on the action instead of the uh, antics going on in the pit lane between Tom Parker and uh, Lotnowski. Yes, Dave Casmith fastest on a 31-0, James Shepard second, Lucas Oiler only third. Now, Lucas Oiler has an every single pole position this season. Um, it would be a feat if he, I mean, there's only three rounds left after this, if he could take every single pole position in a season. Uh, we know how awesome he is on the quali laps. He's usually putting big gaps between him and his, his teammate in equal cars. And Nick's no slouch, but Nick Rowland currently down in fifth position. Simon Cattell, I noticed in practice, was looking slightly more competitive than usual. Currently up in fourth position on a 32-1. Uh, do you reckon uh, Euler has got a chance of this pole position today, Phil, or do you reckon the Car Smith Shepherd, let's say combo, are, uh, are you know are going to be in front today? Well, it is always hard to bet against Lucas, and I do believe he takes a lot of pride in the fact that he could actually get every pole this year. But we have seen in the last few races that that Dave and James have really come on, and you do get the feeling it's only going to be a matter of time before someone actually does. Um, half a second, it's a lot to find out here, and as you say, he, he's been pulling out big gaps on Nick in qualifying, and he's already, what, six tenths ahead of Nick? So, that's a gap already, so you just wonder how much is actually left in that midnight car for him to uh, get up there. So, um, I think it's going to be dicey, I think this, if, if this could be the race now where he, he loses that pole position record, although, he may prove me wrong. Well, obviously the car doesn't have the same advantage as it did early on in the season, so we're not going to see gaps of two or three seconds to third place now, like it was in, in the early part of the season. And uh, Dave and James, we know, do a superb job in the cars they've got. They're nowhere near the upgrades that the Midnight have, but Midnight have been struggling recently with the car setup and working the tyres and all that. They shouldn't be as effective here, I would have thought, because the, the compounds we're using today, as you've probably already seen, the grey compound, the hardest compounds you can possibly use, pretty much, uh, from Pirelli's. And, you know, so far, the tyre wear... <laughs> It shouldn't be an issue really on the harder compound. If, you, if you're wearing out the harder tyres, there's something seriously wrong. But uh, we know they have been struggling with that, so it's something to keep an eye on during the race. There has been talk, and Dave Carr-Smith fed me this information earlier, so a uh, big thank you to Dave Carr-Smith for this. The information he fed me with earlier was that uh, he would expect two stops to be the norm. Uh, possibility of one stop for James Shepard. We always usually see him do a, a strange strategy, let's say, one less stop than everyone else. And the possibility of also some free stops. Uh, some people say free stops is quick round here because of the fuel load, so we'll, we'll mix the strategies again in the race to look forward to. Uh, one man I was going to point out as well, Matt Clip, currently in P11 for Green Stripes Racing, the teammate to current pole sitter Dave Carr-Smith. In the practice session I was having a little race about with him um, when I was, uh, I was actually testing with Jeff Mead earlier, and uh, he was looking quite competitive actually, we had a little dice on track and that, and he really looks like he's upped his game. Um, I'm used to seeing Matt qualify as is everyone else right down the back of the field, He's currently P11, and uh, I know he's done a faster lap time than that before in practice, so Matt's got a lot to offer here. Yeah, and it's good for green stripes racing that they're going to be maybe able to get something extra out of that second car. Uh, Dave has done pretty much all of the point scoring. I know Christoph got points, um, I think it was back at Monza, but um, obviously, in regards to the uh, team championship, you do need two good cars to be scoring points regularly to challenge. So. If the, Matt can get up there and with, with cars missing like the Drake cars and the Synergetics, it leaves more of an opportunity for, for guys who've been sitting outside the points most of the season to maybe get in there and get one or two. We have what, we've 19 cars here right now. Actually, I'd nearly say 18 because I'd say I see Chris Williamson hasn't come out of pits and I'm assuming it's going to be a similar strategy at the Norberg Ring where he's just going to start the car, maybe do a lap just to... Um, ensure the car is classified in, in the final results. So we're, we're looking at an 18 car grid maybe. 19, sorry, when uh, Tom Parker comes back. I miss him going there. So um, we're looking at, we're not going to get 19 cars to finish the race. So there's a good chance somebody, someone like Matt Clip could get points here today. Okay, yeah, shame get, for his getting to beat. qualifying right is going to be important. Yeah, shame for his to beat there. He was on a good lap there. He was, a good, he was only two tenths off in sector one, I believe. He just spun it. In the midway part of the lap. Both the Midnights were out on track a moment ago, didn't improve at all. Dave and James have both decided to stay in the pits. Now there's only uh, a few minutes left. Now I'm not sure. They've got basically, if they want to get out and do a lap, they've got to get out in the next, say, 50 seconds or so, or the next minute. Uh, you just mentioned the team's championship as well. Before the last few minutes hot up, Midnight lead the way, uh, as I'm sure you know, with 313 points. They are 193 points in front of the second place team, which is currently Green Stripes. 
And then there's quite a big uh, battle actually going on for this second position at the moment. I'd pretty much count Drag out of that now because I don't see them uh, challenging for any any points whatsoever in the next uh, few races. So it's basically green straps on 120, red match and 94. They've still got a good chance. They've got a good package available if OJ comes back. And you've got Nordson and Hawkeye, 83 and 60. So there's quite a battle for that uh, second spot, let's say. There's, there's not too many points between them. But there's plenty of uh, money up for grabs there. Uh, and the guy I was going to point out as well was the Dale Stones in 7th position. He's a stand-in tonight for OJ Clark, as you mentioned, Phil, not turned up. Um, and he's actually in 7th position. Now, we know he's in a good package, a good car. But he's actually in front of his teammate, David Junt, who's got a much better reputation. Perhaps not this year, but last year, David Junt was... You know, one of the uh, the best drivers of the year in some respects for bringing the car home in the points. So he's really acquitted himself well here. Uh, news up front, Dave, uh, Dave Carsmith and James Shepard have elected not to go out for a final run. So they're quite happy with that lap time they've done. They seem to think that they cannot improve. Nick is currently on a lap in fifth position. Nick Rowland in the Midnight Motorsport. He's coming around the final corner now, but he's two tenths down and a whole second off Dave Carsmith. But that's him done. He's in the pits now as well. So no one inside the top ten apart from Bart DeVos. But... Lucas, yeah, Lucas is starting the lap now, so we'll see his first sector in a minute, but uh, the man who is coming around the final sector, that's Bart DeVos, he's coming into the final sector now, currently in 10th position, two and a half tenths up in sector one on his own time, lost a bit of time for the middle sector there, he's now 1.5 down on Dave and only a tenth up on his own time, but he, he needs three tenths to jump up another position, so possibly Bart DeVos not going to move up here, so we'll probably take a look at uh, Euler now, he's coming through the first sector, this and now he's two tenths up but it's slight he's, he's got the back end out there now for turn six there he's got to keep flat for here now he's, he's currently half not even half a tenth up on Dave Carsmith he's two tenths up in his own time if he could improve by that much he still wouldn't game on pole position so he's got to find something special for the middle sector now coming through the carousel flat out into the entry lets it run wide back on the front nice now he didn't downshift the gear as well that was a good a good carousel there got a good exit and this will carry him for good speed nearly 200 mile an hour for the kink in fact he did touch 200 for the kink there awesome speed from Lucas Hurler this to defend his unbeaten pole record this season oh and he's lost a bit he's a tenth and a half down now coming through the right hander now coming up to the uh, the fast right then left underneath the bridge many of accidents for here as Paul Tracy had a massive accident for there years ago not for Lucas today into the final corner he's got to get on the power nice nearly oh yeah he got a bit twitchy there on the power slightly too early turned in too early I don't think this is going to do it I think the pole run is going to end and I think it's going to be Dave Carsmith that yes he does so uh, Lucas improves by three tenths to a 31 one but unfortunately it's not enough so we finally have a new pole sitter and it's Dave Carsmith Phil yeah not even a mid the front row he missed out by zero zero two so we have Dave Carsmith and James Shepard Ironically, the two lads started at the back of the grid at the Nürburgring for when they missed out in qualifying. Well, James missed out and mucked up his lap, and Dave elected to start at the back of the field, feeling that he'd cut and he didn't want to take a penalty for this race. We have them at the top of the standings this time. So um, we were talk talking about the fact maybe both there was a missed opportunity at the Nürburgring for them starting at the back of the field. We'll have to see if they can take advantage of up to that clear air, go ahead and into turn one and scamper away. Um, and a great performance there from Simon Cattell in fourth position um, in the Kernow, sorry, I never grow with the, good with that pronunciation. The Kernow uh, Sport, uh, fantastic, which is his, his teammates in 13th as well, Mark Wick, so it's been a great day for Kernow. Um, and obviously, like you're saying, uh, Stones in seventh position is another standout performance. Yeah, I'm not quite sure if Cattell's still on a lap or not. He's hammering it round the middle sector now. I'm not quite sure if this time's going to count or not. We'll see if he pits at the end of it because the. the qualifying has reached zero the checkered flag went out well over a minute ago but he might have just snuck this lap in he's coming for the final corner now he is on it but no he's pitting so he was definitely not no, I can, can't talk about it. he went through that last corner <laughs> you you could feel that uh, just the car kind of just seemed to understeer a little bit there whether he was just taking it easy or just mucked it up but still fantastic performance from um ahead yeah, indeed. Of, uh, Nick in fifth yeah, and he, he, even if he had improved he probably wouldn't have moved up in position anyway there's a big gap in front of him of eight tenths but uh, quickly just run down the order then, so Dave Carsmith takes pole position at 31 flat, James Shepard second at 31 one, also on a 31 one, Lucas Hoyler, so very very close up front between the top three and we're used to seeing them three battling for the lead, hopefully today we'll see something similar. Ominous for Euler I would say though, because they've actually out, Carsmith and Shepard have actually out qualified him today, normally they don't do that but they are very quick in the race them two over Euler, so Euler's going to have something on his hands today, if he has got tyre problems, 
I don't see him hanging on to them two, to be honest. I expect them to drive away. Kellen Fourth, if you say, with an excellent job on a 31-8, any other person is to break into the 31s. Then Nick Rowland, disappointing fifth position, 32-1, a whole second behind his teammate. Rude has to be uh, sick, another consistent qualifying performance from Rude in the Nijo racing car. The two red archers, David Junt, Dale Stones, just out qualified by his teammate. Actually, it was seven tenths in the end, so David did pull something out the bag there. Dale Stone still acquitting himself well though in eighth position. Tom Parker, ninth position. Bart DeVos rounding out the top ten for Nordson Racing as well. And if you want to run, run down the last ten, uh, Phil? No problem at all. Uh, Lewis Redshaw in second Hawkeye Racing Car is in 11th, just ahead of uh, Matt Clip, who we were talking earlier for Green Stripe Racing in 12th. Uh, Mark Wicks is 13th with Pavel Lognowski in 14th. Kieran Ryan is in 15th position with um, the Stanton brothers marking David in 16th and 17th. We then have the, uh, again, 2x2 two two then with the ST Racings with Jeff and Mark Fuller, sorry, who actually has appeared to, to race, sorry about that, earlier bit. And then we have Chris Williamson who didn't set a time, so I would assume we're going to have 20 cars starting, but uh, we will quickly go down to 19 by the time the first lap is over. Yeah, there's again a bit heated in the chat at the moment between James Shepard and Simon Cattell. Uh, James Shepard Basically saying to uh, Simon Cattell, he isn't as good as he thinks he is. Um, I, I do believe we should touch on this because it's paddock chat at the end of the day. It's only a bit of banter, but it's uh, it's certainly enjoyable to read about. So Cattell and uh, Shepard at loggerheads. So if Cattell gets a good start and gets anywhere near Shepard, that could be fireworks. And also, I did notice there was a bit of... Uh, it was almost an apology from Dave Carr Smith um, to Lucas Euler. He basically said he's never been disappointed to take a pole before, but today is because he feels like he ruined Lucas Euler's run. Now, we didn't see any of that. I'm not quite sure if the cameras had it on or anything. Or we haven't heard anything of it since. Don't need to be a penalty because I know they get on very well then too, so I'm sure Lucas, he doesn't have to fight for anything really, does he? So I'm sure there won't be any penalty applied to that, but Dave... He's very, he's very hard on himself, Dave, isn't he? Sometimes, I mean, he made a mistake in the qualifying session last race out. He, he feel, he, he felt he cut the track. It was never proven as such. You know, there was no admin who said, you know, you cut the track. There, Dave took it upon himself to start from the back because he thought he cut the track. Now, that's also that's very gentlemanly, but also it, it's very critical of oneself. Oh, I agree. And I think maybe, maybe it wasn't a case of something on the track. Perhaps he's just saying he, he's disappointed that he's ruined Lucas's pole run. At, um, Obviously, he, he, Davis is very involved with him at midnight and has done a lot of testing with them and, and works with, with Lucas. So I, I can see um, they're, they're, they're mates. And as, as much as it is nice to get a pole, I'm sure he's, he's feeling for Lucas right now. You know, when you're four poles away from uh, getting poles the, the entire season, I'm sure he, he, he's been secretly hoping, like I say, a number of people, because Lucas is a genuinely nice guy. Um, I've had the opportunity to talk with him now a few times, and he's a very down-to-earth bloke that... She, you know, be great. You know, sometimes sometimes people get the impression that oh, these super fast drivers, they're, they're pricks and you know they, they're above everyone else. They see themselves above everyone else. And Lucas is one of those guys who is not is 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 nothing like that. And um, it, he's someone you know, I I'm, I've been cheered on since the moment he's he's come in because he, he's had that sort of attitude. And maybe that's what Dave means is that he, he's just disappointed that Lucas isn't going to get that um, all poles in the season. Yeah, sorry, I, I misread. As soon as you pointed that out, I realised I've misread that completely. Basically, he's just saying, he's not saying he held him up, he's just saying, I'm sorry I broke your pole run. But to be fair, if Dave hadn't done it, James would have done, so it wasn't really Dave's fault. Um, and also, yeah. uh, just saying to any parents out there watching, if your children are tuned into this broadcast, then I would, I'd send them to bed a bit early, because Phil's doing this commentary with us tonight, so it's going to get a bit, uh, oh, no, I promise let's say, I tasteful promise. That, with that, the language. That, that, already that's, my one, that's my one for the night. That's the one for the night. You Hopefully. can keep your children up a bit longer than keep them tuned in. Um, but yes, um, thank you for that, Phil, anyway. Um, always entertaining. But uh, yeah, uh, Shane Froyler, Um And like you say, he's very down to earth. I did work with him, or have the pleasure to work with him, back in 2009 at the Formula Sim Racing um, League in the Ash Racing team. I worked with him there pretty much all the season, from round four, I think it was round five onwards. And yes, he was very down to earth. He was very analytical. He knew what he was doing. He was very quick back then as well. Um, we had a few, uh, let's say, uh, I, I, can't, I can't really think how to word this one. This season, we've, I think I've had a spat with pretty much everyone who's beat me this year. Um, it's purely out of jealousy and frustration of oneself not achieving what I thought I would achieve this season. Um, but we seem to put it all behind us and we're all getting on well again now, so that's good news. Uh, the last person I want to fall out with is Lucas Euler because he's, uh, like you say, a true gentleman. 
Indeed, and um, we will. So hopefully, if we get an opportunity in the broadcast, we'll have an opportunity to talk with uh, the Green Stripes Racing Manager, Christoph Lichtenstein. He he's currently watching the broadcast and has been saying he'd be interested in an interview. So hopefully, once things get a little bit calmed down, maybe after the first few laps, if it gets calmed down, I should add, um, we might be able to have the opportunity to talk with him. So as um, we have another minute and a half left of the walk, we've number of cars out on the grid. Uh, just warming up their cars, uh, getting some practice starts in very... Actually, what I do think of it, because I raced here last night for the Super Cup, um, one thing we will have to watch out for at the start, it's a very tight, condensed grid, um, probably because this is more suited for uh, stock car racing and um, American open wheelers, which wouldn't have standing starts. So the grid spacings are a lot tighter, so it's something we're definitely going to have to watch out for at the start of this race with... Um, these cars, especially with that we know that they, they're a bit more damage sensitive than other cars, as we've seen in the past, unless uh, we're talking about Dave's car from the Nürburgring anyway, but um, we could have fireworks off the start, it'll be something to watch out for. Yeah, Tom Parker currently the only man circulating and done a lap time, there's a couple of guys gone out on track, like you say, practice starts pretty much. Um, I would definitely put a bit on Dave Carsmith, Matt Clip was fastest now in a 38.8. Insignificant times, really, or, or unsignif unsignificant. Um, but uh, I would definitely put a, a a lot of money on Dave Carsmith getting the rocket start that he usually does in every single mod that he seems to race into turn one. Uh, the man who does need to do something quite special today in this race is Nick Rowland. If he wants any chance of winning this championship, there's only four rounds left now, including this one, I believe. If he wants any chance of winning this championship, he's got to beat Euler today. He's 34 points behind now. That gap is getting ever bigger every race, and I wouldn't like to say he's given up on it, but I get the feeling he has mentally. Today there was a second gap between them. That's the most it's been for a long, long time uh, since I can remember. Because at, at Turkey, for example, Nick was only a tenth behind Lucas Oiler. So maybe the mentality of Nick now is, this season's done. We, I'm going to get a second place if I can. You know, if not, I'm not really interested in that to be honest. Maybe that's how his mentality's gone because he doesn't look as motivated when he's driving the car. He looks. It looks almost sheepish when driving, as Tom Parker now tops the light time on a 135.1 for his race pace. Um, you mentioned also this track used. Uh, I'm sure it's familiar with everyone, and I, we've all seen it at some point, I'm sure. Um, and it's usually the American series, like you say. I know there's a couple of, like, uh, I know some bike racing comes here now and again, things like that. But usually the AMA stuff. So there's a lot of American sports series going here. Uh, you don't really see it much anywhere else. And I think it's the first time I've ever seen a Formula 1 car ground here. I don't know about you, Phil. Um, yes, and uh, yeah, that's that was part of the reason of wanting to bring the cars here is because it's it's such a great circus to drive, and uh, especially uh, when you do look, America has a, a lot of circuits out there, but they they do have a lot of dodgy ones. And I know some people were saying maybe we should go to Indy, and I think the idea of winning in Indy it's a nice thing, as like winning in Monaco or winning at at Spa. But um, in terms of a driver circuit, it's it's this is more enjoyable to drive. Um, so and, and and even though I um, I had a pretty poor race myself last night, it was just nice to, to spend the hour driving around such a great circuit. And hopefully, um, at the very least, we'll have the lads in, enjoy their drive tonight. And hopefully, we'll we'll get everyone through the first lap now, win one piece without any drama. Yeah, it is a very enjoyable track. I did about 20 laps or something about three hours ago. And it was real. I mean, I've driven it before, obviously, but uh, just to come into these cars, into a Formula 1 car and have a ground here. I've driven it on the iRacing sim before with the Formula 1 car, but it wasn't as much fun as these. It was a real, uh, let's say, woohoo moment going through some of the corners, especially the carousel and the kink. I mean, that just... It just takes your breath away going through it in these cars, especially I've just seen in qualifying, like I say, Euler and probably Dave and, and James as well, going through there at 200 miles per hour through the kink. That's just crazy, crazy top speeds. Um, and and the, the reason the gaps are probably so big as well, I, I noticed in qualifying there was quite a big field spread. There was almost, I think it was six or seven seconds to say 15th or 16th. Normally we're used to seeing one or two seconds. I believe that's purely because not many people have raced here. So obviously, They've got no experience on the track. Some of the guys who race the American series and that, like the Le Mans and the GT, might know this track, but some of the guys further down may have never raced this track before. I mean, I for one, have, oh, and we've got someone off in the background. Is that Bart DeVos? Is that Bart DeVos or is it Loknoski? No, it's Loknoski in the background on the warm up lap. As I, I believe he was trying to practice start and he spun it into the pit wall. Not quite sure if we'll get a restart here or if the admin will uh, decide to let the race carry on. Because after all, it looked like it was his own fault. But there's no real reason and Loknoski looks like he's going to be starting from the pit lane 
Ortho or the very, Lord it's, it's, it's very reminiscent of what I've seen a lot in the Super Cups, as if in that second phase of acceleration, just the rear end kicks around and it sends it around. I've seen a lot of that in the Super Cup this year um, from numerous drivers, but it's the first time I think I've seen it with the um, Super League this year, so it's a strange one for Pavel. Of something else that might have been popped up, and I'm just thinking from, from past experience, it could be something to do with lag. I know a couple of races ago there was some incidents where they f where one guy saw a car station in front of him and he had to take a void in action. So we'll have to wait now and see if we hear from Pavel during the race or maybe in the post race we'll figure out what exactly happened to him there. Well one of the biggest complaints of this mob was the engine power curve wasn't it? It's very easy to spin the rears up and it was one thing that I struggled with I must admit. There's probably some way of sorting it, I could never find it this season but we'll just quickly run down the order. We've got Dave Carsmith, James Shepard, Lucas Euler, Simon Cattell, Nick Rowland rounding out the top five there. Rude hits to big sixth, David Junt seventh, Dale Stones eighth, Tom Barker ninth and Bart DeVos tenth. And then we have uh, Lewis Redshaw on 11, Matt Clip in 11, or 12th, uh, Mark Wicks in 13th, Pavel Noxy was due to start 14, but we'll be starting in the pit lane now. So that'll uh, promote everyone up one spot with Kieran Ryan, Mark Stanton, David Stanton with Jeff Mead, and Mark Fuller in 18th and 19th. And Chris Williamson is will also be starting from the pit lane as well. And we expect him just to do one lap and then pit. So we have 19 cars in this race. Yeah, indeed, the two Stantons once again together on the grid. Uh, very cl uh, closely matched this season, them two. They always run around the race together, so keep an eye on them two for the race. They usually provide some action. Um, smallest grid of the year, we've just been informed as well by Mark Wicks. Uh, no synergetics either on the grid, and I believe they've been struggling with budget. But the field is now pretty much lined up. We'll discuss that further in the race, I'm sure. Unless we have an action packed race once again. So the grid now lined up, Dave Carsmith in that pole position, he's facing slightly to the left, he, he knows James Shepard's quite good at the starts as well, and he's got to try and stop Euler coming through the middle, the lights are on, and it's green and go, the United States Grand Prix GPWC Super League is go, and it's a great start, and look at Nick in the background, Nick's made an awesome start as well, he's right on the back of Luke, and there's a crash in the background, someone's lost the front wing, I'm not quite sure that is in the background, carrying the wall uh, David in turn one, and David, uh, sorry, J Dave Carsmith leads for turn one, James Shepard, and Lucas Euler and Nick Rowan at the top four at the moment, rude history, I'm just trying to keep an eye on what Nick was doing there, I thought he was going to try and challenge Lucas Euler, but now he's got to look defensively, and off in the and background, Cattell. that was Cattell off, off in the background, yeah, Cattell off in the background, so that fourth position start gone already, and Lucas Euler challenging James Shepard as we come down into turn four, he's down the inside and he's got the position, so early on Lucas Euler has got the pace early on, but can he make the tyres last now? Yeah, just looking at what happened to Cattell there, he was on the, he was kind of forced wide, and he had uh, David jump down his inside and then when he turned into the corner his front wheel connected with the rear wheel of um, Cattell and he came off the wor or, uh, off of Junt and he came off the worst so um, a great qualifying all for naught now but he's down in 12th and with the condensed grid he should be able to work himself back up but he's not going to get an opportunity to challenge uh, for a podium. Yeah, Dale, Stone, Dale Stones is causing some issues. Dale Stones had some lag or something mid-corner. He spun at the carousel, unfortunately. That's a real shame for him. But uh, Lucas Euler now, and James Shepard's got back past. Dave, uh, James Shepard's got back past Lucas Euler. And he's winning too deep, though. And Euler's going to get the exit now. Oh, it's a bit of lag there from James. I thought he was winning well too deep there. But Dave's making a break for it at this moment in time. My personal bet for this race was James Shepard. And I'm, I, it still is. I'm still sure he'd be on a different strategy to everyone else. He usually always is. And Nick Rowland looking now to make a move on Lucas Euler. He's on the back of him. He's in the slipstream. Has he got the superior top speed? You wouldn't have thought so because Euler's also in the slipstream of Shepard in front. Histerbeek fifth. Junt sixth. Tom Parker seventh. Lewis Redshaw. Great start up in eighth position. Kieran Ryan also doing well into ninth position. Tom Parker done the good start there from eighth position on the grid. Bart DeVos in tenth position. And Simon Cattell down to eleventh. That's the top eleven after lap one. Uh, James Shepard starting to pull away a bit now. He's, start, he's closed the gap through turn one, turn two on Dave Carsmith. The man who is, and who's that in the background? That's one of the Hawkeyes again. That's Lewis Redshaw. Lewis Redshaw made a mistake out of turn three. Then he's going to he's going to lose a handful of positions now because the the momentum of the other cars is going to breeze and pass. And we're nearly three wide coming down into the left hander. This is going to be contact for sure. Yeah, it's oh, just not it. There's barely enough for one car. I find at the time as we see Barton Foss sticking it down his inside and see if he can get him into the next corner. No, Redshaw managed to hold off his um his former teammate from the Super Cup days that last year. But yeah, that corner is very tight, and I find that um. It's a bit awkward in a car at times, uh, you, you feel like the car is just understeering, you're just waiting for the car to turn into it, so at the best times you can luckily get one car through there, to try and fit two, brave and dicey stuff, but um, obviously Lewis did well just to only lose one position. Dave Carsmith, sorry Dave Carsmith was a main mistake for the carousel because he had a one second gap coming through sector one, it's now down to about two tenths, in fact it was closer than that through the kink, but I think James had to ease off a little bit there because he got a bit tardy 
through the uh, right hander there, the flat out right hander, the dirty air on settled his car. So at the moment we have a one, two, three, uh, four actually, because Nick's hanging on quite well in fourth position. He's dropped back a bit this lap, but Euler's up the pace slightly towards the final sector. And James Shepard has got a run on Dave Carr Smith. Now, is his top speed superior to, to uh, Dave Carr Smith? I don't think so. It looks like Euler's actually the man who's closing up with the top speed. So Euler looks like he has superb top speed. And he's really closing up on James Shepard fast as we go into turn one. He's never going to try and make a move into here, is he? He is indeed, and he's made it stick, but James trying to hang on on the outside, that's not going to work. Fantastic move there from Lucas Hoyler. Yeah, it's turn, it, it, there isn't that much of a breaking point for turn one. You, you might just lift off the throttle down a few gears and let the engine break for you. Um, so you, had, you do need to be brave going in there. Um, particularly, and because, again, like some of the other corners around this track, it is very easy just to have the car understeer and wash out when you're going into a corner like that. And then you could easily take off the two of you. So, uh, you said brave stuff from Lucas, and he's now on the hunt after Dave Carr Smith. Um, James did seem to be struggling a bit out of the, whether it was a poor exit out of the last corner, but he didn't seem to have the drive that uh, Dave had. So. Yeah, super, I was about to say, superb, superb scrap went on for P9, Kieran Ryan, Simon Cattell, Cattell trying to fight his way back through us, that lap one mistake, he's down the inside, that's not going to work, there was nearly a front wing loss there, and Bart DeVos on the back trying to make something of it, we don't have a retirement yet, but unfortunately Dale Stones and David Stanton did both have to pit at the end of lap one, and Dale Stones' excellent qualifying performance has put him well back down the field, as the battle still rages on for eighth position, ninth position, but uh, Dave Casmith once again through the carousel, not very quick, and Lucas Oiler has closed up so much, and it's now a one, two, three, battle for the lead, Nick's still hanging on, he's 1.7 off the lead, but seems just doesn't have the edge to close up, and Lucas going for the lead, yeah. Who's gone off, sorry, who said that again? Cattell. Cattell spun off, sorry, Cattell spun off, yeah. Oh, and, and now Redshaw spun as well, coming through the final corners. So it's all uh, happening here on the, the, the first few laps here, and Nick Rowland, who I did say was struggling for pace, is now under attack from Ruud Histerbeek. Nick seemed to be doing okay early on, but he just seems to have fallen back this last lap or so. And Lucas Oiler, the man who's been very quick so far in this early part of the race, wondering if he's running a softer compound or, so, or something, taking a risk, or maybe on a low, lighter fuel load, we don't know at the moment, but we know his uh, race pace isn't that good. But at the moment, it's absolutely superb, because he's right at the back of Dave Carsmith, and Dave Carsmith not defending heavily, so maybe Dave knows something we don't, and Lucas takes the lead with ease, really. Dave didn't fight that one at all, so perhaps Lucas on a different strategy to these two, Phil. Yes, yeah, so and we see James obviously going to look, be looking for uh, an opportunity to see if he can pounce on Dave. Um, as you said, maybe, maybe Dave is in the know and he's willing to let Lucas um, run away with him while he waits for his strategy to come into play. We did see last time that um, Lucas ended up having, wasn't it, he did have to take an extra stop over these two. So maybe they're going to be both happy to let Lucas go run off into the, the distance and uh, get him when the pit stops come around. Although they will want to be trying to stay close because we have seen that Midnight have an extremely quick pit stop crew and um, obviously there's no point in kind of saying okay going to say okay we'll stay close until the pit stops come along and then uh, we'll try and jump them because trying to jump a midnight car into pit stops isn't going to be an easy proposition. Well what I was going to say I know Christoph Lichtenstein who's watching this broadcast wanting to get involved with us if we could somehow get in touch with him and ask him if he wants an interview in the, in the ne near future we could definitely get him involved at this moment in time because obviously it is his team Green Stripes Racing as such uh, I believe so obviously we, he may know something about Dave, he may know that if Dave's on a different strategy to Lucas or he can give us some insight as to why he's just let the lead evaporate so slow, so easily Sorry, but the man who really does need to make something to this race uh, as we said earlier on, Nick Rowland, he's currently 2.8 seconds behind his teammate who's made the charge from third to first in three laps and at the moment it's not working out as James gets very close to the back of uh, Dave Carr Smith now onto the back straight he's in the perfect position for the slipstream but uh, can he pick up it, no, he's not really picked up early enough to make a move is he unless he's very demon on the brakes as we know he can be but at the moment he'll settle for third position as we head into the middle sector. But in the background, Rude Histerbreek qualified sixth up in fifth at the moment, obviously with, with Cattell's demise. Right on the back of Nick and Hanyu. And the man I was going to mention a minute ago, David Junt in the Red Archer. He's been he's come under a lot of criticism recently on the forums and, and various drivers have been uh, criticising him. He's not basically extracting the max out of that car. That car is equal best car with the Midnight. At the moment he's doing a good job. He's up in sixth position. He's hanging on to the back of one of the Midnights and Rude Histerbreek. We used to see David well outside the top ten. He's currently in sixth position, doing a good job. Yeah, well, it is only lap four, so we'll see how he gets on for the other what uh, 43 odd laps. But yeah, for someone who has been a little bit maligned this year and has had some very so-so performances, it's an important time of the year when he needs to start impressing people. You know, where silly season is in full swing, and and while we're probably expecting to stay with Red Archer, he, he may be willing to look for uh, somewhere new. Maybe he needs a, a new set of a uh, new, uh, new place to live. Maybe he wants to change things up and see if that'll help um, his environment. So 
it's important for not only him but for a number of drivers on this uh, grid to impress the uh, team owners towards 2013. There's a big battle for 12th position for the uh, man who scored points in the last two races and we've, we've cheered him on quite uh, quite successfully in the last two races. Mark Wick's currently in 12th position holding off a train of cars at the moment. But it's Lucas Hoyle leading, leading from Dave Carr Smith who's got James Shepard right over the back of him. But James can't seem to make the move because uh, he hasn't got the top speed to go with it. He's very good on the brakes I've just noticed through the final sector but can't make the move stick. Uh, James Shepard third, Nick Rowland fourth. Rudy Hiswick still tied onto the back of him in fifth position. David Junt slipping away slightly now in sixth position. Tom Parker doing a good job in seventh. Hope he can keep that up and score some decent points this race. Simon could tell 8th, Kieran Ryan 9th and Bart DeVos rounding out the top 10 at the moment. And then we have that big, we have Matt Clip in 11th uh, standalone at the moment and a big train of cars from Mark Wicks, Mark Fuller, Lewis Redshaw, Mark Stanton, Jeff Mead and that's pretty much because the next guy behind that is Pavel Oknowski who's a long, long way behind. I actually just got a message there. Apparently Pavel hit the wrong button. That's the message I was getting from um, Chris about what might have happened to uh, Pavel on his um, opening lap. Uh, so oh, he's well down because he would have had to start from the pit lane and he wouldn't have been released till the end of the first sector. First sector here must be about what 30 seconds long so he's already a, a fair whack off there at the back of the field so it's going to be a, a rough night for him and has been a rough season for Pavel. Uh, as I think I said the last time out was that it? you, you got to give the lad credit for as bad a season as he's had and the rough look he has. At other people probably would have left by now and a fair play to him for actually just sticking it out. Yeah, sorry Phil, it's been a, a disastrous lap for the Woods team in some respects because uh, Cattell has just got past Tom Parker going through the final few corners and Kieran Ryan spun at the carousel and I believe he's got a puncher or something because he's making his way around very slowly and he is pitting. So Kieran Ryan, from 8th position I believe he was in, he spun coming out of the carousel, carousel, hit the wall and he's punctured the car. Um, James Shepard once again right onto the back of uh, Dave Carr-Smith but looking for position now, Rude Histerbeek is right on the back of Nick Rowland. He hasn't got the top speed to go with it though, he's stuck in the slipstream, he's topping out 209, which you'd think would be enough top speed, but it's not at the moment, because Nick's got superior top speed. But Nick falling off the pace, and is this ominous for Lucas Euler? Would Lucas Euler now be worrying about his tyres, because Nick just suddenly has dropped so far off the pace compared to what he was doing earlier. James Shepard looks like, looks like he, he has superior pace currently to Dave Carr-Smith, and Lucas up front, we need to keep an eye on his lap times, make sure he doesn't drop off the boil as well, because uh, Nick certainly has at the moment. Yes, and obviously we've seen Nick being, being pressured by Root. He used to be, he, Root has been rather the silent assassin. He's not someone who, get, who seems to get a lot of talk as he closes in on Nick now heading towards um, the end of Sector 2, but not enough there to uh, make a, a viable overtake maneuver. Um, well, it's been a great season for he used to be, and he's not someone who probably gets a lot of, um, you know, we, t we talk about Nick, we talk about Shepard, we talk about Carr Smith and Euler. You know, Root Heesberg probably doesn't get talked about as much despite uh, some really great performances in that Nijo racing car and, and it's no surprise that he has been linked around with a few seats now as we as he tries to gain on Nick going down the home straight just doesn't seem to have enough straight and it's got to be frustrating part point when you know you just don't have the top speed to get up there but you know if you were to get ahead of that guy and just break away you would be well clear of him yeah, indeed. Sorry, he has been very... Oh, and Nick's gone in too deep and, and he, I thought there was going to be contact there and so did our cameraman Simon Mellius there we both cheer at the, at the prospect of a collision but um, Dave Carsmith having to get a bit defensive there from James but nowhere near once again but Nick lost the back end there into turn four, uh, turn three sorry, and uh, Rude nearly took advantage of it but once again can't make the move stick. Still David Junt hanging on well in sixth position. There was a battle developing for tenth position. Matt Clip has now moved to tenth with Kieran Ryan's demise and I tell you who has gained his pace and that's Mark Wicks. He's upped his pace quite a lot. Now he's got past Fuller and he's right on the back of uh, Matt Clip now and he's, he's looking to make a move down the back straight so Mark Wick's looking to move into a points paying position once again for the third time in three races. Mark Fuller and uh, Mark Stanton going side by side and he's going too oh, deep Mark gone, yes. deep, and that allows Mark Wick's through so Mark Wick's into a points paying position once again so uh, another strong race from Mark he's not too far behind his teammate Catello's up in seventh position after that disastrous start and um, we're still I was looking at Euler's lap times last time around actually I wasn't about his tyres dropping off or whatever that's not happening at all he's, he's, he pulled a second out in the last lap in fact he's pulled another second out on this lap as well I know Dave's battling slightly but to me Euler's gone for a different strategy or something because his pace has come from nowhere compared to qualifying he's definitely a different strategy to the other guys he's gone across the line now he's just set a 132.7 we compare that with Dave's time when comes across the line a 133.8 1.1 seconds in one lap that's that's not a driver that's got, that's got to be a strategy yeah, um, and maybe as we were saying, maybe that was why Dave decided, oh, we'll, we'll let him go because he knew he was going to be stopping one less. But 
if Lucas keeps up this pace and Dave is going to be losing time between the, the difference between the fuel load and uh, having to worry about James Shepard in the mirrors. You know, it could come back to haunt. We talked about last time about midnight battling between each other was going to cost Lucas the win, and it did. So maybe the decision that to let the Lucas go so easily, but is going to come back to haunt these lads by. Yeah, Jeff Mead, unfortunately, our first retirement there. Uh, it looked like he was struggling around in 15th position. Wasn't doing too bad job, actually. He was keeping up with his teammate quite well, but made a mistake just coming into the final few corners. And unfortunately, that's the end of his race now, uh, which is a shame. But our first retirement of the night, Dave Carsmith and James Shepard still at it, as are... Right, so I think Roland's going to get a move three. on, Nick. He's got a great run out of the carousel, right up his rear ring. It's the same every lap though, unfortunately, and he just pulls away. Look at Nick just pull away now. He, he, he's not good enough on the braking to do this manoeuvre. Nick feeling the need to go slightly defensive, but not too much. But Rude's nowhere near the braking zone. That's the problem. He just can't maintain the speed. And it's the same with James Shepard up front as well, with Dave Carsmith. He gets in the slipstream, gets a great drive, and Dave just pulls away down the straight. As we see now, James got a great run on Dave Carsmith. In fact, he's close to this lap than he's been for a long time. Uh, and as he takes off over the... Uh, <laughs> the hill there and look Dave just pulls away in the slipstream and it's the same with Rude history just behind they just can't make the move stick there's too many straights on this track for that to happen with, with such a low top speed yeah and they're not even close enough to say oh well, I'll take a little, little nibble and see if, if I can uh, scare him off the track um, and uh, as I said you, you don't want to risk just ha a really half-hearted attempt that, uh, that could risk both cars and um, you'd be wondering now whether they're going to be working in their heads both Rude and, and James is there anything they can do with their strategy just to try and, and clear the guy in front of them and get that just that little bit of extra clean track to try and jump them now at the moment it's working for Lucas isn't it because the two guys behind him are battling that's just what he wants and he's got a 5.6 turn to be 6 second lead probably 6 plus at the end of this lap um, and we're looking at a 47 lap race now is he free stopping? That's the question. I know it was mentioned before. Dave hinted that some people might free stop because the fuel costs so much. In and Dave made a mistake through carousel once again. It's allowed James Shepard right onto the back of him now. But once again, James doesn't have the top speed to go with it. And Dave pulls away once again. But uh, Dave making a few mistakes through the carousel now. This is quite a few. It's now six seconds the gap to Lucas Weller in front. Now Lucas would need 20 plus to make a pit stop because the pit stop, uh, the pit lane here is, is really long. It's, it's a horrible pit lane. But he needs a lot more than he's currently got if he's going to win this race. But to be fair, he doesn't need to do it in the first stint. If he keeps having stints like this, he'll quite easily pull a pit stop. So it's in uh, Lucas's hands at the moment. It's just whether uh, if, if Dave and James and, and so on are on the harder tyres, if the harder tyres can match the softer compound tyres at the end of the stint. Like we saw at the Nürburgring, the, the harder compound tyre was able to quite easily match and in some cases go faster, as we saw with James Shepard, who set an awesome fastest lap at the last race at the Nürburgring on old tyres after about 30 laps, I believe. Yes, and just some updates from the back of the field there. Both Pavel Loknowski and uh, David Stanton have both come in to repair for damage. I've seen both guys come in with um, without front wings on their cars from their adventures now in the last few laps. So uh, David Stanton is now down two laps and Pavel Loknowski is down one lap now. He's about to be, uh, be lapped by his own teammates. So things go from bad to worse for those gents now today. Right, well, even despite the fact that Dave Carsmith made a mistake on his previous lap, he was only slightly slower than Lucas Oiler. Lucas Oiler did a 32.9. Slight drop-off from his previous lap. His fastest is a 32.5. Every single lap he's done, pretty much, has been in the 32s. Dave Carsmith took a few tenths out of him in the first sector this time round, so possibly, possibly, we're about to see the changeover between the softer compound and the harder compound. Now, this track, it's not too hard on the tyres in the point of, in the point of view of mechanical grip, let's say. The reason it's hard on the tyres is because of the fast sweeping corners, and there's plenty of them, and it just it's the thermal degradation of the tyre. The tyre heats up quite a lot through the fast left right handers, it's the wall of the tyre that really takes the punishment. And that's what causes the tyre wear around this track. Uh, and the sliding, obviously with more temperature you slide more, and you just, you just it's an endless cycle, you just keep creating more and more heat in the tyres the more you slide. And that's the problem the softer, the softer compound guys have got. Lucas Euler, in particular, has done a 32.8 on that lap. Dave Carsmith, 33.3, so still half a second. But the gap is closing between what Dave can do and what Lucas can do on the separate tyres, we believe. Yes, and um, I said we'll, we'll try and get Christoph up here now in a few minutes. I'm going to go and see if he's ready, and we might get an opportunity to talk with the Green Stripes Racing uh, manager, maybe he can give us uh, some insight into uh, Dave's strategy. So let's go and see if he's uh, available there. Lee? 
Yep, no problem. Hopefully we can get out of Kristoff and get some insight into the Green Stripes racing organisation in the race. Not having a bad race at the moment, currently 2nd and 11th, but we'll go into the more detail on that when and if Kristoff becomes available. At the moment we still have Lucas Oil leading from 6.2 seconds from Dave Casmith, James Shepard right on the back of him in 3rd position. Nick Rowland now in a lonely 4th position, he's broken Rude Histerbreek. So Rude Histerbreek was all over the back of him, possibly a mistake, just going to check the lap times. Doesn't look like it, it looks like his pace has just dropped off, so possibly Rude encountering some tyre problems. And Christoph Lichtenstein is about to join us, I believe, so uh, we'll prepare some questions for him shortly. Um, uh, sorry, David Junt still in 6th position, Tyler Cattell 7th, Tom Parker 8th, uh, about the night, Mark Wick still in 10th position, and just behind him is Matt Clip in the Green Straps Racing, and joining us now, the Green, Stri <laughs> Green Straps Racing team manager, Christoph Lichtenstein. Uh, Christoph, welcome to the box, and we just want to ask you a few questions about uh, your two drivers. Dave Carr Smith currently in 2nd position. In fact, now he's just going to lead, so sorry, uh, Lucas Oil has just pitted, so this is indicating a free stop strategy. Dave and James go through, and Nick goes through as well, so Nick, we need to keep an eye on Nick, see what strategy he's on. He could possibly on something different today. He needs to try something different to get in front of Lucas. Lucas exits the pit lane. Now, we need to keep an eye on how much time Lucas le uh, loses to the leaders, because, I mean, you can see the leaders are already going on the back straight now, and uh, Lucas has only just come out the pit lane. It's going to be 20 odd seconds at least. Tom Parker's just coming across. It's about 22 seconds, I would have thought. 20, 22 seconds. Anyway, back to the uh, interview. We have uh, Green Stars Racing Manager Christoph Lichtenstein. Your two drivers are currently first and 11th position. Matt Clip doing a good job. Um, but we're worried about the strategy in this race, and it's pretty much just been confirmed for us. We were just wondering, Dave let the lead go pretty easily earlier on. He's now got uh, James Shepard over the back of him. Um, how are your drivers going in this race, uh, Christoph? Well, first of all, good evening to you all and to our viewers. And, um, well, I know that they've changed the strategy from what he was planning to do after the qualifying, so at the moment it looks like a battle between him and James for the race victory, I think. Yeah, definitely. So that's pretty much confirming that they're on two stops, I believe. Um, and maybe James on something similar as well, because he's, he's not using this quick early on, is he? He's usually, he usually comes towards the end of the race, but Lucas... After his pit stop, after lap 12, he's down his 17th, uh, sorry, 17th, 7th position. Matt Clip in 11th. Now he's standing in, uh, I believe, for. Uh, who usually takes that position? Shoe, isn't it? He usually races uh, in that position. So, uh, how's he getting on? He's in 11th position. He qualified quite well and he's, he's getting on quite well in the race, looking for some points. Well, um, Matt should replace him for the uh, rest of the season as I really don't get along with this mod. And um, I don't know, he's doing quite well. He, I think he has to. It's best to keep up with Mark Ricks to get the final point scoring positions, and um, so far he's doing a good job, I think. Yeah, indeed, in the, in the 11th position, just outside the points, uh, Dave Carsmith, your main driver at the moment, struggling to hold off James Shepard. Now, um, are, you, are you worried about James Shepard? Do you think he's on a different strategy? I know you just said they're, they're going to fight for the win, and I was spot on with uh, Lucas Oiler. 22 seconds, pretty much exactly behind the leaders. That's too much for a free stop in my opinion, I don't think that's going to work, I think he's just shone early on and that's it done now, I think it is between James and Dave, I do agree with that. Uh, do you think James has got superior pace to Dave or do you, do you think it's, oh, and I thought it was off the track then but it's a slight bit of lag, and do, or do you think James has got uh, superior pace over you or do you think D uh, Dave can hang on? I think they're kind of playing a rating game, James is waiting for Dave to pit so that he can pull out some super fast laps and on the other hand Dave maybe is trying to nurse his tyres to stay out longer than James can do so. Actually, it's quite an interesting tactical game on track. Any questions, Phil? Um, I was just going to say um, something that has been the talk of the paddock now in the last couple of weeks has been your driver, Dave Carson. I think he's been linked with um, every team and their mother for, <laughs> for <laughs> 2013. Um, what, how do you rate your team's chances of holding on to such a, a valued commodity? Well, it's obvious it's. Dave is worth every single penny I invested in him and um, he is giving the team so much with his experience and the uh, development of the car and his raw pace which is awesome and well we are still in our first season so we are still quite a small team and um, I will give my very best to keep him but um, when he finds a team in which he can win the championship with and um, if he really wants to leave, I don't really can do anything about it. I'll give my best, but um, it's undecided yet, so everything can happen. Maybe he stays, maybe he's leaving. I really can't say at the moment. 
Well, one yep. man who's about to lose the position, possibly your, one of your drivers, sorry, uh, Christoph. Uh, he's Matt Clip, he's currently in 11th, he's got Bart, uh, sorry, Lewis Redshaw down the inside into turn 1, so unfortunately for you, you've just lost the 11th position there, but your man up front, like you say, still doing the business. Uh, sorry, feel free to continue, Phil. No, I was just going to finish off by asking, does, does he have any plan, uh, second plans? Obviously, you, you can't sit and wait for David to make a decision up. Um, have you started to work on, have you approached any other drivers right now, or do you have any targets in mind of who you want to see in your cars next year? Well, um, obviously I was um, we were starting to consider a few drivers which um, can fill in for Dave when he wants to leave the team and um, I don't want to say any names now. I sent a message to one driver who is famous for his good pace and um, I'm still considering who will be available on the market so um, I think the money shouldn't be a problem. So. Let's see who will be available and um, who's interested in joining us. And Dave, please. Yeah, thank you very much anyway, uh, Christoph, for uh, coming up and giving us an insight. Obviously, we, we wish you all the best in whatever decision you take. And at the moment, your man is leading the way. So uh, it's good publicity, this, for you. And uh, he's doing a great job defending from James at the moment. I know there's quite a lot of respect between them two as well. So obviously, you'd expect to see a fair fight. Lucas Holland, in the meantime, after his pit stop, did come out. And he came out behind Sam Cattell, but he pulled off a... A very good pass, very simple but good pass, effective pass. Going into the final few corners a moment ago, and he's moved back up to fifth position. He's took a second out of Dave since he came out of the pits. That's been interrupted slightly by having to battle with Simon Cattell, but didn't make it too easy. And also, Rude History did pit a minute ago from the fourth position he was in, and he's dropped down to eighth position. So, uh, Rude possibly on uh, three stop, but also possibly on two stop because it could just be a uh, an early fill because 15, 30, 45 that's pretty much the route you want to take for a two stop. We saw Lucas pit a lot earlier than everyone else, so uh, we, we're sure he's on a free stop or at least trying something different to get himself in the mix. Just waiting now to see what uh, Dave and James do. Yeah, Nick's in now as well, so he did, and we've just been informed the pit stop time is at least 27 seconds. Now, that's correct because he was 22 seconds behind when he came out the pit stops. He had about a five second lead, this is Lucas Euler we're speaking about, and uh, that's obviously why, why he came out only f uh, 22 seconds behind, but. Uh, this time by, it's Nick who pits, and he's the only different strategy to his teammate. Nick Rowland pits from the third position he was in. David Junt pits as well. Simon Cattell pits. They're all coming in now. Tom Parker pits. So Histerbeek's going to move back up the order. And I think just to give you an idea of um, the pit stop ability of the Midnight, Rude Histerbeek is just coming up the, um, the home straight now, and Nick Rowland is out and clear of him. Well clear. Um, he pitted just while we were finishing talking there with Christoph, and so had uh, Bart DeVos, so um, I think this is one of the first times you've actually seen the Midnight Cars go on, on two different strategies. Usually they, um, they they run pretty similar, so just gives you an idea of maybe the mindsets that the two are, are in. Lucas is really maybe trying out the strategy, trying to push the boundaries, looking for that race victory, while maybe Nick is looking for the, um, the safer bet here tonight. I just have one theory as to why James can't get past Dave, and, and if I was Dave, I mean, I had this at Turkey racing with Dave. We know Dave, uh, James' connection isn't the best because he's from Australia, obviously. We know he's a superb driver and so on, and he looks like he's pitting, and yes, he is. He's pitting now to try and get some free air. He knows what's happening behind, and Lucas has got clean air, and James wants some of that as well. So in comes James Shepard. But one of the theories I have that James couldn't pass Dave or didn't want to try it too much, not only because he was down on top speed, also the fact that he's very laggy. I mean, I was very worried when I was driving with James in Turkey a long while back now. I was really worried when he was behind me because there was a few taps and that, but he didn't know he was actually tapping me because he, his lag was that bad. And I wonder if Dave was in the same position there. Okay, we're just hearing that James Shepard pitch stop was exceptionally long, 10 seconds, and with we seem to think that he might have changed strategy here because the Midnights were doing 5 seconds. Now, we know the Midnights are short field and possibly 3 stops, uh, although Nick's pit stop doesn't really make sense because we think he's on a 2 stop. James comes out in 3rd position in front of Nick now, but just behind uh, Lucas Euler now on the back straight, so we'll have to see how this works out. Shepard possibly changing there. He can't feel to the end from here, I wouldn't have thought. Ten seconds is quite a long time. We don't know if he had damage or if it was just... Maybe the Hawkeye's pit stops aren't as good as the other cars as well. We do know that the Hawkeye's pit stops are not as good as the other teams. They lose about two or three seconds in the pit stops. So it could just be a team effort problem. 
Uh, meanwhile, David Carl-Smith still continues to run on. He's now on lap 18, and he hasn't pitted yet, and he's still got 21 seconds to Euler. And Dave lap times 33. He's, he's in a 32.7 on one of his clear laps, and that's not far off Lucas's best when he's just come out of the pits on a 32.3. So the pace is there for Dave to win this race again. I still think James Shepard has got a much more pace in him if he could get some clean air. But can he use this cleaner now effectively? He's got some space now in front of him between Lucas Euler, and can he use this effectively to try and jump Dave? Dave Carsmith continues again and does a 35-0. So Dave's had a terrible lap there. A 35-0 for Dave Carsmith, race leader. That's 2.2 seconds faster than, uh, sorry, slower than his best. That's lost him a lot of time. He's lost two or three seconds there. And if Shepard has had a good outlap, which I believe he would have, because he's had a clean, he's had a very clean run at it, Dave Carsmith could find himself behind James in a minute. Yeah, and Lucas are across the line to do a 32-5 that time around. Just going back to James and the pit stop there. It's got to hurt. If, if that is mostly down to just uh, uh, the pit men just not being quite as good, I mean, you got to. It's, it's got to be a nine for a driver that your best efforts are going to be um, hurt by your team and, and all that effort. And, and it would be another reason why James would probably look to make less stops if you're going to be losing that sort of time. As I said, there was five seconds of a difference between the midnight stop and, and just trying to gain that on the track is. Um, you, know, you, you don't really go and find five seconds out on the track unless the driver makes an error. So it, that could be something that's going to actually rule James Shepard out of this. We'll, we'll have to keep an eye now on the uh, the second round of pit stops to see if it's um, well if he does stop. We is, I'm I'm going to guess he is. I'm going to put it down to just poor pit stopping there. Um, it'll be interesting to see how long his um, second stop will be. Yeah, we'll see from his lap time in a moment if uh, if he's going to the end. Because obviously, if, if he's diabolical, then we know he's going to the end. But uh, we've had two retirements in this lap. Actually, we have Dale Stones and David Stanton not really featuring in this race. Unfortunately, either of them both having problems early on and both out of it now. Unfortunately for them, Dave Carsmith continues again. Now, what's this lap? He did a 35-0 last time, a 33-1 this time. So responds beautifully there. Lucas, will Lucas find I that don't think will be as quick to. Sorry, just going in. Lucas won't be as quick. I don't think this lap he had to negotiate. Kieran Ryan going through the final sector, and I don't know whether they're kind of feeling. I um, my screen's just a little bit laggy, and I just wonder whether it's the same for him because he seems to be very tentative going around the Irishman. Thirty-three uh, one. So. so he matches so. Dave's best on that lap there. So yeah, you're right there. He didn't. He wasn't any quicker, but he at least matched him on that lap. Uh, James Shepard coming across the line. Now this is key. Now James Shepard first lap out, well first proper lap out on pits comes across the line, and it's a 33.8, so it's quite a bit slower. So possibly more fuel there. Well, we did see a longer pit stop, and I know how it feels. I know exactly what you were getting to a minute ago. You were alluding to the fact that it must hurt that the fact that your team is a lot slower in the pit stops. I definitely, I was one of the most uh, vocal about that last year. If you, I don't know if you remember, I, I really didn't get on with the fact that I go into the pit stops and it was random. I mean, this year it's down to the team, it's down to the people that you pick to do the pit stops, so you have more of an influence. Last year we had no influence whatsoever. We'd come into the pit lane, you could have 5 seconds or 11 seconds, uh, and it was it was unbelievable. You'd lose a race because of a random pit stop time, and I, I just thought that was totally unfair. Yeah, no, I'd be in agreement. At least this year, you've, like you said, you've got control over it. You're in charge of bidding for the people and making those decisions, so at least uh, from a team level, You've got some responsibility. The idea of uh, randomised pit stops, yeah, that just to, to get, like you said, just to have something taken out by 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 a random figure. Now that's a kick in the groin. Yeah, uh, and it was said, oh, it's the same for everyone and stuff like that. And Dave Casmith just sets his fastest lap in the race on the 32.6. Very good lap there from Dave, considering he's on old tyres. Now, now actually, looking at this, if he goes two, if Dave's on a one stop. Dave, that maybe explains his pace early on. And maybe Christoph alluded to the fact in the, in the commentary box a moment ago, he said he's changed his strategy. Mark Stanton's just retired, unfortunately, both Stanton's out of this race. But Christoph Lichtenstein a moment ago said something along the lines of they've changed the strategy after qualifying. And if we look now at Dave Carsmith setting his fastest laps, he's on the harder compound tyres and he's going one stop for sure because he's done 20 laps now. If he does one or two more laps, he can get to the end on fuel and he's gone this far, so why not? So actually, for once, he's out strategized James Shepard. Uh, and that doesn't happen very often. And obviously, we have James Shepard now 33 seconds behind and unable to match the pace that Dave's setting. He's now a second a lap slower. Dave, I put money on Shepard on this race, but uh, I wish they put me on Dave now because he's in the pound seats. Um, indeed. And just kind of quick gander down through the field. Um, Nick is pretty much in no man's land now in fourth position. He's um, 40 seconds off Dave Carsmey. He's about seven behind James Shepard and he's got another nine ahead from uh, Ruth Heastwick who's really lost out during um, that pit stop phase. Uh, Simon Cattell's doing a pretty good job in recovering after um, 
bit of a horror show in the, la in the first few laps, which is uh, what, what was it, two spins from, two separate spins. So he's in um, six with uh, David Junt hanging on to his uh, rear wing in about seven, and Tom Parker, after his issues in qualifying, is in eight, so he's looking on for a good. And who we were talking about earlier there, Matt Clip in the second green stripes car, he's in ninth, well, he's ninth for now, but he's got Bart DeVos sitting right beside him going into um, turn three. Part of us goes around his outside there, heading into the corner. So, um, but Mark Clip is looking good for 10 position right there. He's got a good, he's got a decent sized gap over Mark Wicks in 11th. So, there are some battles out there on the track, but f for the most part, we're spread out. And it's, you know, it's what you get w around a big track like this. You can find yourself um, a lot of open room that, that you can set yourself into a rhythm and just drive along. You know, Matt Clip hasn't pitted either yet, so both the green stripe racing cars look to be on one stops, and that could explain why Matt was losing positions early on as well. And people driving around the outside of him, he knows that he's got the better strategy than Bart DeVos and people like that, so he doesn't need to fight them necessarily now. He can fight at the end if he needs to defend, but at the moment, Dave Car Smith continued again last time around, did set a very fast lap, but Lucas Oil 32 8 was two tenths faster, but that's not enough. If, uh, well, they've both got one more stop to do, I, I believe. Lucas will be doing maybe two stops. I'm not sure, he doesn't seem like he wants the three stops because I think he would have been in by now. Um, it wouldn't make sense anyway. But with the pace he's on, you, you'd expect him to go a lot faster on a, on a three stop. Uh, Dave, I believe he's on one stop, so I'll probably pick this lap on next, I would have thought. Or the next two or three laps at least. Um, but 18 seconds, that's a very, very comfortable gap, and James Shepard is not eating into that at all. Maybe James took a gamble in the pit stops and is going fuel to the end, but I doubt it very much. Nick Rowland in fourth, just like you say, on his own. And he's not doing what he needs to do. Um, Nick today needed to beat Lucas Oil in this, in this race uh, by some positions, actually, by some margin to sort of you know, re-establish himself in this championship. That's not going to happen, I don't think, unless anything happens to Lucas. Still plenty of laps left yet. But at the moment, he's stuck in fourth route. He's to beat fifth position, doing a good job. And uh, no, I think the gap's too big. Uh, we're just discussing the fact that uh, Nick might lose second position in the drivers championship but I think the gap is uh, still slightly too big I'm just gonna quickly check that now it's there's 21 gaps 21 points between Dave and Nick right now yeah so it's, it's impossible for Nick to lose second currently um, but he, he, if he stayed like this Dave would take a big chunk and we did discuss this in the qualifying session the fact that uh, Dave may be aiming for that second position in the championship if, and God forbid if anything happened to Lucas Euler in this race and Dave won he could still aim for the championship as daft as it sounds um, there's only three three races to go like but Nick could lose second, and today, if he finishes fourth and Dave wins, that's going to be a big, big chunk out of his lead. Yeah, actually, we could see a situation where Lucas would be crowned champion tonight, because it's, it's 15 points for a win, if I remember correctly. should remember these things, but... Um, obviously, that means from this after this race, there'll be a maximum of 45 points available. The gap is, what we said, 34, so if there was a situation where... Lucas was to outscore Nick by 11 points now, unless Nick goes out, we're unlikely to see that today. But um, we could, in theory, see Lucas crowned champion, and uh, with the way Nick's running today, it'll probably be just a formality when we get to Brazil in two weeks' time that um, Lucas Arder will be crowned champion. Yeah, as you say, unless something disastrous happens for Lucas, um, it's probably not going to happen here, but he's definitely going to solidify his position as Dave Casmith has pitted now, so Dave Casmith right on the mark as well, 23, but that's pretty much bang on, that's exactly the lap he was going to pit for one stop, so Dave definitely one stop, and it was quite a long pit stop as well, uh, yeah, quite a long pit stop as well, um, Lucas Euler now resumes the lead, but I don't think that'll last much longer, James Shepard unfortunately comes out behind now, Dave Casmith, now James, if he's got anything, to, if he's going to do anything in this race, he's got to get past Dave now and pull away, or at least try and uh, gap him if he's possibly going to the end, we're not sure. But Dave's tyres are cold now, so Dave's got a few laps for his tyres to, to warm up. And James Shepard is right on the back of him, as you see, he's closed up humongously through turn two there. Yeah, a, Dave was a actually hard through him. turn two there, so that didn't help the situation either. But yeah, as I said, that, that top oh, speed is... James closes up massively in the break, sorry for that, but James... Now Dave's car, Smith's cold, cold tyres not going to help him. James going to the inside and James is going to make the move. He's made the move stick as well, slightly laggy, but he makes the move stick, and Dave Carsmith sees position. I think Dave knows in his heart that uh, he's not really racing uh, James Shepard, because James she unless James Shepard is going to the end, but Dave tries to fight back, possibly just a, a, a tactical move there to say, uh, I'm not giving you this position because uh, you don't really need it, because, I mean, James, James isn't racing him as such, so Dave can just sit back now and let the two guys in front of him push as hard as they want. It doesn't matter, because I believe Dave's got at least a 15-second gap of these two in reality. Yeah, and, well, 
I wouldn't say that James might not have actually fu fueled it up. I mean, I believe Lucas that. Now I'm not quite sure. How, how, sorry, how sorry, Phil. Lucas, Lucas Pitt. Yeah, so confirming, he's probably around. on the free stop. And that's a disaster for Lucas either. And actually, we were just saying a moment ago that Nick needs to do something. If Nick can get back in front of, of uh, Lucas here, as he did in the first pit stop, and Nick's coming now around the final few corners, if he can get back in front as he heads round onto the Road America straight, uh, Lucas is coming down the pit lane now. Nick needs to get in front. I don't think it's going to happen. Actually, oh, David, because it's the wrong pit lane. Look at James Shepard. It goes side by side. Oh, and James takes. Uh, sorry, James. Dave takes the lead. Very. Very ballsy move there by uh, Dave Carsmith to muscle his way past uh, James Shepard. At least it looked that way. It might be a little bit of lag on my, my side now. That might look a little closer than it was. But um, Dave not wasting any time. We're not going to sit beside James and wait for him, wait for him to decide whether he's going to stop or not. Um, and he pulls away a little bit now. Obviously using that, that, that bit of an advantage he has in the engine department there to pull away on the end of the straight. So um, all that initiative now has gone away from James. I'm really surprised by that actually, I didn't expect Dave to come back like that. I'm sure James must have made a mistake because there's no way he's that much slower, let's say, because he, he lost so much time there. But uh, Nick did come out, and this is what I was keeping an eye on, Nick did come out in front of Lucas, and Nick's on a different strategy. I believe Nick's on two stops, Lucas on three. They both got one more stop to make now, so Nick could, in theory, take points away from uh, his, his team there. And Matt Clip, what is Matt Clip doing? Matt Clip uh, is being lapped, and he's trying to race Lucas all through the apex of uh, turn eight there. That was very dangerous there from Matt Clip. He's, he's, Apparently slightly his record from this race, he's done a good job so far. But Lucas now will have to fight back past and James Shepard and Dave Crashmith are very close again. We'll keep an eye on them for you. But Nick now is in front of his team leader, or, or, or supposed team leader let's say, his established team leader. And uh, if he can stay there he will take points back off him. So uh, not, not such a formality for the championship as we first thought. And James Shepard is right in the slipstream once again of Dave. Just gets to that point and just and just see Dave just driving off towards the sunset. And I said, there, there's no like Dave was able because of that top speed was able to just throw one down the inside of him going into turn one and and get by him. James does just doesn't have that in his arsenal. And if James does have to stop, if James doesn't have to stop again, you don't really see how he's going to get by uh, apart from uh, Dave making a mistake. And even if that happens, James needs to get it done at such a point in the track that he's going to be able to pull away and. The long straights are just never that far away from to, to do something like that. Yeah, I can see I can see contact happening. I really can because James Ping is 250 ping. I mean, I know we were shortly to talk about it, but he, he's lagging so badly. Let's say it's really hard to follow his car and see where his car is. I mean, when he made the move on Dave, I wasn't really sure if he made it or not. And uh, if if they get anywhere near each other, Dave's going to be spinning around like a top, and James won't even know he's hit him. So this is very dangerous in some respects, uh, especially for Dave. I mean, Dave's. They're going to be the victim here if it, if it does happen, um, and that'll basically just gift the Midnights uh, possibly the win, let's say, because if, it, if, it, if it's a collision that results in uh, a retirement, then that's possibly uh, game over. But uh, Lucas closing up really fast on Nick as well, so Nick's going to have his uh, work cut out to hold that position from uh, Lucas overall. As James and Dave get very close in the final corner, you probably saw that on the camera there, very, very close coming through the final few corners. Possibly some slight tyre rubbing there as they're closing up on back markers as well. You see in the distance that's Mark Fuller, who's about to go uh, two laps, possibly three laps down. No, two laps down it will be. James Shepard once again can't close up. This is where he's quick, look for it. Not this time by well, he does close up a bit, but not as much as last time. He, he almost had a dive down the inside into this corner the last time round. Dave goes in slightly too deep there in the dirty air of Mark Fuller. This gives James another run, but he hasn't got the uh, top speed to match it. Yeah, um, Mark Fuller probably could have let off going through turns one and two there, maybe got out of the way a bit early, but it was, it was split second decisions, it's, um, it's what you make of them there, probably, as I said, I love Dave, looks a bit, but not enough for uh, James' advantage, and at this point, you know, you, you, you're ju just there sitting there, you're trying to plot how you're going to get by, gonna try have a look sorry. here, maybe. He's going, yeah, he's going to have a look, he's, oh, he's trying it, but he backs out last minute, he got a really good run. Once again, though, he's stuck behind him. He looks like he's the quicker car, but yet Dave's in front once again. So maybe Dave's just playing with him because we did see, like you say, Dave got back past James again after that superb manoeuvre he pulled, and uh, Dave just passed him with ease again. So maybe Dave's just saying, "Well, I can toy with you. You know, I've got I've got superior pace." But it's a very risky strategy if he's doing that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be doing that. Although I suppose he's won a number of races this this year, so I suppose you you could say, "Oh, maybe." I'll... Oh, James! Whoa! Oh. Nice save. Oh. <laughs> Heading towards the, uh, the dismantled tyre barrier there, at least it's dismantled on my, my screen, but um, that's... 
Now I suppose this this is where we might get an opportunity to see what James is like in terms of pace. Now that he's out of uh, Dave's dirty air now, we'll see if he can actually close back up and whether he does actually have a superior pace over Dave Carsmith. And that might let us know whether he is actually going to be on a, still on the two-stop or whether he did actually indeed fill up the tanks and, and trying to go along on his uh, second stint of his. Well, Nick and uh, Lucas were battling probably end of this lap actually because Lucas has just taken a, a, a humongous amount of time out of him through sector one already. He's closed up by nearly a second through the first corner, so that's crazy pace from Lucas. He's really pushing hard. He really wants to show that he's still the dominant force in this championship because the last few races, let's say if it had been like this all season, you might not have been seeing uh, Lucas with such a lead. It was, it's, it's looking more and more like the car really gave him the advantage he needed to obviously exploited it to the max, not trying to take away his championship from him, but. Uh, the advantage he had in the beginning part of the season really helped him because if it was like if it was like it is now at the beginning of the season we certainly wouldn't be seeing a midnight 1-2 uh, in the championship and we certainly wouldn't be seeing the constructors championship lead they have at the moment we'd see probably uh, green straps and hawkeye and possibly a few other teams as well uh, up there challenging for this championship but the early season advantage has worked well and lucas weller now trying to regain the advantage from his teammate for this third position this is a championship battle don't forget because nick still can win this championship and he's got to defend this position. He's got to fight for this, but he lets nope. it by. And I think uh, that just shows what yeah. the mentality is of Nick Rowland at the moment. That's very disappointing. I know they're teammates, but this is supposed to be a championship battle. Nick Rowland probably knows he's not really in the fight, though. And that just shows the mentality. He hasn't got the pace. He knows Lucas is the superior driver. And he's just letting by. And James Shepard does set the fastest lap there. Thank you, Simon Mellowish, for informing us on that one. So you're right, Phil. He did have pace and clean air. Yeah, what, 31.7 after doing 33s, and he's right back up on the um, back of Dave Carsman. Just before they, they, they go into battle, just I want to touch one more bit on the, on the Nick bit. I maybe understand where he's coming from in that regard. I think for Nick, I think midnight is bigger for him than his own personal goals. And maybe he sees, and especially, we, we talked to him, obviously, after Germany. I think you, you might have still been there. I think you had to leave early on them. By the time we got him to talk to Nick, and he was gutted that he he felt he'd cost Lucas the win by their their battling. So I think for, for Nick, I think the idea and the concept of midnight uh, is bigger for him and more important to him than his 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 driving. So I think maybe that that's something that's probably come into play that he thinks. Oh, Whoa! Luke. Dave's made a big mistake for the carousel once again, and James hits him up the rear. Not quite sure if James received any damage from that, but uh, we'll soon find out. I, I don't think he will. His front wing's still attached, but uh, Dave got a, a bit of a slapper on through the uh, tank slapper on that is through the uh, carousel. I'm getting worse than you, Phil. Uh, he got a bit of a tank slapper on through the carousel, and uh, James had nowhere to go, basically. He did well to... Make, it was only light contact, so James did well there, but he closed right up on the back of him. And yeah, just getting back to uh, what you were saying about Nick there as well. I mean, I, I criticise him slightly because he's, uh, he's just let uh, Lucas by, and it's basically the mentality of, I'll finish second then. Which I'm not really a big fan of. I always think you should go out and try and win, but, like you say, He's also a team player, and he's thinking of the team. He's thinking, right, if we battle, we could cost each other this championship, which we've, you know, they lost the Cutlers, the Constructors Championship. That was sewn up, uh, well, that was sewn up in in, or in uh, January this year, wasn't it, really? But, um, well, actually, it was sewn up a year ago when they decided to take this approach and, and, and do what they've done this season with this car. So, fair play to them for that. But Nick's thinking, we could lose this Drivers' Championship between us if we keep scrapping like this, and, and James and Dave keep taking wins. But, uh, Neither of them nearly took a win then, because if David had lost that car anymore there, that could have been a huge contact there for the carousel. And we talked about James needing Dave to make a mistake, and it just happened to be one that happened right in front of him, and he wasn't able to take advantage of it. So that, that'll be, I'm sure James will be like, in the back, or in his helmet there, just trying to will Dave on. Well, it's the first mistake we've really seen out of him. I know we, we've seen some not great lines from through the car style, but a lot of that could be down just to the fact that he's fueled to the brim and and the car just not being comfortable especially compared to what we see james going through that corner um but obviously will dave make another mistake after that well it's taken 28 laps for him to do one he does it again if it's going to take another 28 laps the race is going to be over well there's a few possible battles down the field we've got the great battle for p1 which you're probably currently watching i would have thought and it is uh and bart devos has blown his engine in 12th position that's bart devos out in the Nordstrom racing car so another disastrous race for Nords and Pavel Lotnowski in the pit. So this lap goes from bad to worse for Nords. Really not the force they were, are they, anymore? They've just really dropped off this season. Since Joe left, the team really has gone into decline, but possibly just saving for next year and looking for a brighter future, a bit like Midnight did last year. And look at the success they had. 
Uh, so the battle for lead going on, as ever. James trying to make the most of what he's got. Trying to pressure Dave into a mistake. It's his only chance. Then we have Lucas on a P3 on his own. Nick Rowland a lonely fourth. Once again, Rude hits to be a slightly lonely fifth. But he's got to be careful because Cattell has been closing him down. For the last two laps, Cattell's been closing him down pretty quickly, actually. We have David Junt in a good seventh position. A solid seventh position for Red Archer. Tom Parker in a solid eighth position for the Woods Racing Team. That's some good news for them at last. That, you know, it looks like Tom... He's having a more consistent race. Let's hope he brings it home. Mark Wicks, once again, ninth position, doing a great job in the points. That's another good uh, feel-good factor of this race. Lewis Redshaw, tenth after a troubled start to the race. Uh, we have Matt Clipping, eleventh, but we believe he's on a one-stop, just like his uh, team leader, which means that he's looking good for later on in the race. Here in Ryan, twelfth. A bit of a shambles, really, this race once again. He had a spin early on, and he's just been in the way all, the, all since then, unfortunately. Every time the leaders come up to lap him, he's been in the way. Mark Fuller once again way down the field, back the Voss blown engine, Otnoski way down the field after the start line problems. And Stanton Jones uh, Stanton Stones and the other Stanton and Mead are all out of this race. Yeah, I just caught uh, I had a look there what happened the back. He's going into turn three and just maybe looked like he downshifted too much and blew the engine going into the corner seemed to be an issue. I believe he was saying some I heard someone saying something about um engine or not sorry, uh, he'd uh as we see James Shepherd coming into the pit stop. Uh, for his second, so that was the answer to that question about whether it was a, a long one or whether he was fueling up. We'll see now how long he is this time round. As Lucas Euler goes into second position and Nick Rowland goes by and he will take into third. Obviously we're expecting both of those two lads to uh, stop in the near future for their final stops. Um, away goes James and we'll, we'll see now where he's going to come out. Ruth Heesterbeek is coming into the pit lane as well as Simon Cattell continues on so... Don't pit. James is going to we'll see now if he's going to get. I think Cattell's going to beat him out of pits. James nope. goes straight up, just about. Um, obviously, James has got to be wary about uh, his own cold tyres now compared to Cattell's, will be up to temperature and how he was able to jump uh, Dave on that outlap of his. So he's got to get the hammer down and get going. And I think there's probably a safe enough bet he will, looking at the gaps right now and with the superior pace of Shepherd's car versus Cattell's. Well, this is Cattell's chance to also make some inroads into uh, Histerbeek's lead that Histerbeek had in him before the pit stop. So Histerbeek comes out on the colder tyres, runs slightly wide for turn one as well. So Cattell now has a chance to get into that fifth position and hold it. James Shepard still looking good for second position because the two midnights, as you say, got out of pit yet, and that's coming up in the next few laps, I would have thought. Probably the next five or six laps, we should see all the pit stops shaken out and sorted. But Dave Casmith, the scary thing is, he's got 31 seconds on James Shepard. That's going to be the gap for the win, pretty much, because Dave's going to the end. Well, I really believe he's going to the end now. There's no reason why he shouldn't be. And that's that's it. That's the gap for the win. It's going to be 30 seconds, pretty much, unless James can eat into it a bit and Dave might ease off slightly. But what an unbelievable performance from Dave, if this is a strategy. Nick does pit now, so Nick pits from the third position he was in. Uh, James will uh, recover that third position back any second, and he's already coming through the final corner. And Nick's going to find himself further down the order after this pit stop. Lucas Euler continues in second position, yet to stop. But Dave Casmith once again, everything he races in at the moment is Cattell Pitts. So Cattell and Histerbeek is the battle we want to watch now. Histerbeek's only just come through the kink, so uh, Cattell's got a decent lead, but yet obviously we know the pit lane, pit lane is quite long. It's a very long pit lane. Cattell's not yet in his box, just about to hit his marks now, and Histerbeek's coming through the final sector, so uh, possibly not the time he wanted to gain. Nick comes back out in fourth position, pretty much where he's been all race. Yes, as uh, Cattell still sitting in the box, he's just leaving now, but we see he's coming up the hill. And also, in between what, was, what we were saying, 27 seconds for a pit stop, you're also going on the fastest part of the track for the other driver, so he's belting down while you're there, what, uh, about 100 kilometers ish an hour. Um, you've got the other guy going down the road about three times the speed, so only adds when you, you're basically pedestrian speed. as. Um, what are we talking about? Maybe five or six seconds. Probably the gap is more or less the same of what it was. Um, and uh, David Junt is still in close proximity. It's been a very good race for David Junt now. He's, he's staying with Cattell. And that's got to be a, a boost for him, as we were saying earlier on, that he's been much maligned. We were talking about that point about lap four. Here we are on lap 32, and, and he's still very good. And on a day when the team is without OJ Clark, and obviously has, has that second seat has been a bit of a um, carousel, Excuse the pun there with the track. Very um, good. Yeah, it's my one for the day. Well, see, it's been, been a bit of a carousel. Obviously, Yanni Taskin has been in that car. We've had OJ Clark, and now today we've had uh, Dale Stones. It's a day where 
David Junt, the man who's been there all season, has has needed to step up and show something, show some metal, and and it's it's nice for him to actually come out here and do it. Now, of course, it'll be all for nothing if he goes back to what he has been for the rest of the season after this. But um, maybe a bit of a, a turning of the page for David Junt. Yeah, Cattell did gain a bit of time on his to beat there, so the the battle will develop for fifth position, I believe, and and possibly, like you say, it could include David Junt himself because David Junt is. He's really been lapping well these recently. He's been doing low 34s. Cattell's only doing uh, 34 mids. Uh, the odd 33, but he's not very consistent with that, is uh, Simon Cattell. If he catches his to peak and Junt keeps lapping the way he is, I mean, that time around, uh, Cattell, let's just monitor the lap times. Obviously, Cattell's out laps, so we can't really compare them to, uh, directly. But Junt did a 33.8, so Junt now in the 33. So Junt, you know, this could be his best result this year. I don't think he's had a, a decent result this year, let's say, compared to last year. He had a few podiums last year. Didn't quite get the win, unfortunately. Uh, it was Muscat, his teammate, who, who shone in that area. But uh, if his to be Simon Cattell and David Junt all close up, that could be a fascinating battle for that uh, fifth position. Best of the rest behind the championship contenders, let's say. Oh, well, James Shepard isn't really a championship contender, but uh, he may as well be with the performances he's been putting in recently. Now, just kind of look at the gaps there. It'll be... We'll have to have, keep an eye on the, the lap times for uh, Euler versus Shepard. Um... There's a gap of about, what, 25 seconds between the two of them? And what we're saying, 27 for a pit stop? So, while Dave might have this all wrapped up in a nice, pretty bit of ball, um, the battle for seconds between Euler and Shepard will be one we'll have to watch. See, that's, we'll have to wait and see what uh, Lucas can do, and how, if he can lower that gap between himself and Shepard. But even if it stays as it is, he's going to come out in very close proximity to the Hawkeye car, and um, on fresher tyres... We've already seen what Lucas did to them earlier on in the race in that situation. Yeah, and, and Shepard's outlaps haven't been that special. Either. Obviously, we may be on the harder compound or something, but he's really struggled. He might have had traffic as well. I did see him lapping a few cars a moment ago, actually. Um, so maybe he's just struggled to get the laps he needed. But Oil has been charging away in the distance doing the 32 mids, 32 highs, the last four laps, let's say. And that's good enough. That's nearly a second a lap faster. Kieran Ryan's farcical race continues. Uh, and he's now in the wall with no front wing as Junt comes by to uh, lap him once again. So uh, Kieran Ryan, Lotnowski, three laps down now in the Nord's car. I mean, to me that's just unacceptable. Even though he started from the pit lane, in in that car, that Nord's car is quite a good car. Pavel Lotnowski, is he really deserving of that seat? Because uh, to me that's just nowhere near getting the max out of it. I mean, you've had a driver uh, who's just jumped in the car, Bart De Vos, for the first. I think it's the first time he's racing that car this season possibly the second, and he was running well up the grid, he was running like top eight, top nine, and Lotnowski is just nowhere near the pace in that car, what it should be doing, and unacceptable to me, to be honest, uh, obviously there's probably no other drivers at the moment to be able to fill that seat, but I'm sure Nords are looking at other options, I know if I was running that team, I certainly would be myself, that's no disrespect to Pavel, I'm sure he's just struggling with the mod, because he can be very quick in other series, we've seen in the Super Cup, he was very quick last year, but uh, this, he's been uh, very off the pace, let's say, off, off, off colour this season. Yeah, um, as as we said earlier, you know we are in the middle of silly season. We've num numerous articles coming out lately of people trying to, you know, impress on people. As we can see ourselves with the uh, job centre that's available there at uh, gbvwc.com. If you're interested in actually taking part next year, you can check us out. You can check everything out there and put yourself up there for prospective jobs for next year for. Uh, driving them, we have numerous people already looking for uh, seats next year. I mean, this, this is, was it, we're September, and we're talking about 2013. I thought last year, with people signing up at the end of November, was mad. Uh, that they were deciding, okay, I'm going to race here, and we hadn't even seen the mod. We have people in September looking, and, and obviously we have seen Midnight, um, and that was just before Nürburgring, that they would signed Lucas and Alex to the team. As we see uh, Lucas Euler coming into the uh, pit lane now for his final stop, getting uh, burning up those tires for the last time there, making sure not to... Uh, speed into pit lane. It's a bit of an awkward, we didn't actually get a chance to talk about it. It's a bit of an awkward pit lane entry going up a hill and then kind of the line is right on the crest. Um, I'm surprised we actually haven't seen any accidents there. At least we haven't caught any on the broadcast. Um, James Shepard is coming around the last few corners. Lucas Euler is away. That was a very quick stop. So we will see now where these two lie. I expect James Shepard to take the lead here going into the... Um, but um, Lucas still trundling down pit lane as Kieran Ryan comes out ahead of them. It's going to be tight. No, James Shepard takes it. Uh, Lucas is, yeah, about the two-second gap of where we thought he might be. So, this will be the battle to watch towards the end of the race now. 
uh, Lucas getting fairly hairy through turn two there. Uh, he's definitely on it as he's heading down the road after um, James Shepard. Um, as we said, we expect Lucas now to haul him in, and Lucas has had, had the advantage, I think, with the um, the top speed coming through the corners. Not corners. Ah. That's a stupid sentence. Uh, the top speed down the straights, there's, there's a better. Better than using curvy curves anyway. But um, James Shepard, he's struggling behind Kieran Ryan. Kieran Ryan turning out to be a bit of a roadblock. And I'm sure James has a few choice words, which I refrain from saying for, for the uh, kids that are watching out there. Um, he finally gets by him, but that's going to cost him. And um, I'm sure Lucas Euler, and Lucas Euler is coming and he's going to be thinking, oh God, I've got to go through that same thing. Um, now, I think Lee might be slight a slight AWOL there. I'm, not quite I'm, sure I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I apologise for my silence. I'm not quite sure if my connection is up to the job at the moment. Um, just check, can you hear me okay, yeah? Yeah, no, I'm fine. No, I, was, I, was, I was leaving you up there. Was, we're all good. Oh, look, Kieran, 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 Kieran. I was trying, I was trying to be nice to you this, comp this uh, broadcast, but um, why make things harder for yourself, man? Seriously, okay. As we go, the gap is, what, 1.2 between James Shepard and Lucas Euler. Both of them have lost a bit of time there behind Kieran Ryan. So, back to the, we're back to the original equation where we expect Lucas to be able to um, close back in and before my city sentence about this time lap. I would expect if, James, if Lucas can get up behind James, he, he has that superior straight line speed that he will be able to breeze by him and James is going to be ended up in that same situation that he faced with... Um, Dave, and just t speaking about Dave, okay, the lads probably would have lost a bit of time there behind Kieran Ryan. Um, he's still 31 seconds up in front, despite these two having paid for fresher boots. Yeah, he's got this race in the he could come in for another pit stop, couldn't he? And uh, put some fresh set of boots and go for the fastest lap if he wanted. But uh, as you say, James Shepard, not the highest top speed on the grid, and if Lucas Euler gets a sniff of that slipstream, he'll breeze past him. We've seen Lucas Euler with one of the highest top speeds of, uh, of everyone on the grid so far. And at the moment, he's closing in nicely for this slipstream, but will his tyres last the distance? He's still got 11 laps, well, 9 laps to go here. Uh, 8 laps coming up at the end of this lap, so uh, will his tyres be able to hang on? Um, I'm just looking at the battle for 5th position as well. Could tell uh, he's closing up a little bit. He's only 3 seconds behind his to beat now, but if his speed can keep this pace going, uh, and the same with Junt, they won't really close up as much as we expected. Mark Wick's looking good in ninth position. We'll probably focus on this battle for second now as Lucas is getting very close. Let's compare the lap times as we go across the line. 32.7 for James Shepard and Lucas uh, does a 32.4. So three tenths faster on that lap. The gap only nine tenths of a second now. So three tenths lap. And I expect more of this lap to be honest because Lucas' tyres now will be full of temperatures. He gets, oh, he's, he's trying so hard. Lucas, look at that sideways twice through the same corner. He's trying so hard at the moment. Uh, yeah. Lucas Euler really wants his second position. I was going to say, he may not the have the, the winning car underneath him anymore that he had at the start of the season, but uh, you can't fall the boy for commitment as he just, you just see him eating him into the gap on Shepard now coming through these corners. Yeah, we, it, we, he's just been compared to Lewis Hamilton by our cameraman, Sam Melowish there, and uh, at the moment, uh, well, let's hope he's not as aggressive in the overtakes anyway, because uh, we know what usually happens when Lewis tries to move, and it's not usually the, uh, the pleasant, uh, pleasantest of outcomes. Um, Lucas Euler closing up on James Shepard for second position. This would help him in the championship. This will help him sew it up if he can get this second position. Dave Carsmith out in front. He's got nothing to do, really, has he? He's probably reading... Uh, or thinking about next race, possibly, about how he's, how he's going to dominate the next race. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure he's got um, all his um, perspective... Uh, offers for next year on his um, PDA there and he's going through them now and he's trying to decide um, dinner reservations for meetings with team owners. It would be a good tactic um, because at the moment he's got nothing else to do. He's, he's, he could park it, have a cup of tea and he'd still win the race. Uh, very good strategy from Dave today. Once again out, out thinking everyone else and that's generally what I was trying to get at as well at some point uh, last broadcast. You don't just have to be quick nowadays, you've also got to be an engineer because that's what most of these guys are and they seem to think like them as well because you can be a technical director and driver in one, it seems, in this league because if you have the better strategy, if you have the better anal analytical, uh, I can't even say the word, analytical mind, you can do a, an extreme job. And look at Dave Carr-Smith. A couple of years ago, you would not have recognised him as one of the quickest drivers out there. He's always been analytical, but look what he's doing now. He's, he's focused on the job and he's just dominating everything he races in at the moment, including the Masters. Yeah, I think that's actually, you just touched on something there about 
you, know, you need to be part engineer, part driver for this. I think it's probably one of the reasons that I, I wouldn't consider myself much for Super League now these days. Is as you said, some of these guys are just so smart and being able to dissect these cars and get the most out of them. You know, I, I think I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an okay driver on the best of days, and on the worst of days, I'm pretty pretty crap. But <laughs> um, to compete at this level now. You you do need to bring all those kind of pieces to the to the table and put that jigsaw together to become pre a pretty complete driver. There's no kind of kind of showing up and being pure speed and okay that might get you something, but it might not get you the the championship. And you know, these guys are are providing a sort of a template that many are going to probably try and follow down the line. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people, especially with the way James is so good, how he's used programs like MoTeC to his advantage this year. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of people, maybe myself included if I can get past the technical jargon, uh, trying to figure out how to uh, read and understand that sort of stuff to uh, better improve on um, performances for next year. Yeah, the key is not just using the software, it's understanding it. That's, that's the key, isn't it? Like you say, um, I mean, this season, I really didn't get on with this mod. I, I thought it was going to be great in the pre-season tests with Drake. We looked really competitive, we, we ran a load of fuel in every test and we were sandbagging like crazy and we thought we had the, we thought we had the advantage. I thought I was at least half a second faster going into round one and I, I went out on the, sorry, off topic slightly, just while the battle heats up a second as Lucas still closes in, only by a tenth or so every court, every lap now. But yeah, in the, in the round one we turned up, went out in qualifying and I put, I put the lap in and it put me on provisional pole and I, asked, I remember getting on the team radio and saying we've got it guys, we've got it and then all of a sudden, Euler went, I think it was 1.5 seconds faster, and I didn't know what to do. My jaw just dropped. I have never seen a gap like that before from first to second, and I just didn't know what to do with myself. I was going to say, I think you were sandbagging. I think Lucas spent a lot of the preseason yeah, sandbagging as had, well. I think, they had extra I think sandbags even that, to that was something I did think. Yeah, I think um, was something I think I did notice with um, Lucas during some of the times I. I, I remember test car a few times and I was out with him a few times and he seemed really quick and then when we came to official tests or even free practice he just seemed to be in the middle of the pack and it seems to be because he does seem to sandbag during free practice and you really don't know what to expect out of him until qualifying and that's when you really see what he has under his uh, belt. Now at the moment he hasn't got enough to catch James Shepard because I think James has got this really unless uh, well he can do anything in the next few laps because we know how good James Shepard is on the long stints, and then the longer this goes on, the, the more it's going to suit James Shepard because Lucas's pace isn't that good when he gets to lap five or six on the stint compared to James's. At the moment, he's pegging it quite nicely, but yeah, just getting back to the point I was making a second ago, um, the, the, the season turned out completely right. I'm sure it has for a lot of other drivers as well. You, you have expectations when you go into a season, but the things they've done this season with that car, I could never find the sweet spot with this car all season. It's been very difficult. I thought I'd found some things when we turned up with the race and we'd be nowhere. And it was purely down to the setup. I, I, I'd still stand by the fact that I drove okay this season and that I, I enjoyed my driving. I just couldn't set it up the same. I didn't have the same mind as them, let's say, in the setup. And I couldn't find the same. I always thought I was good with setups until this season. And I, I still think I know a fair bit about setups, but compared to, say, James Shepard, Lucas Hoyle, possibly Dave Car Smith, Maybe Nick Rowland as well. I mean, he's had a good season, let's say. Possibly some other people out there as well. His to me has been very competitive. Doing as much, you know what I mean? Because I could never find the sweet spot of this car or make it do what I wanted it to do. Last year's mod was completely different. Last year's uh, car, I, I, I was so happy with it. I loved the mod, I loved the car, I had the sweet spot with the setup. In fact, I always remember Dave Carr Smith at Monaco last year. He had my setup at Monaco last year um, and he said to me, You guys have nailed this. So it just shows it's down to the mod as well. If the mod doesn't suit, it's very difficult to find the sweet spot because it's hard to get into your rhythm. Oh yeah, I would completely. I think there's some guys who can kind of go from mod to mod. I think we talked about the fact that Dave, he, you know, he's winning here and he, he's winning in the Master Series as well, which is a completely different mod. It's a BMW E90 touring car, for those of you who don't know what the Master Series is. Um, and there's guys who can go from mod to mod. And you see that throughout the sim racing community. And then there's others who... Sometimes you get a mod that you don't like, and I find my, I fall into that category. There are some cars that I am utterly crap in, and to be honest, I, I wouldn't drive because I knew I just can't, I can't be competitive in. Um, I know that, I know going completely off topic now, but the uh, Skoda Octavia mod, I am horrible in. I just I can't drive the car to save my life. And then there are other mods out there that I can just find a sweet spot in. I was a big fan of like the IndyCars 09 and the, the VW Fun Cups. It, for myself. 
you need to find happiness with a mod, really, for lack of a better word there. Um, you need to be comfortable with it, you need to know that you can drive to your ability and understand it. And as you said, if you can't get comfortable with the mod, you're already staring um, at, a, at a pretty big uh, legwork to go on. But um, just I want to actually ask you a question while you were going through there and, and you were saying you obviously you didn't know, you felt this year that you didn't know as much about setups now as um, after this year now, after seeing what, what the likes of James and, and Lucas have come along with. With the way Midnight I say have operated that, you know, they've, they've worked as like a collective high between them and their test drivers and everything like that, and you're interested in having a team in the Super League next year. Are you going to look at that like as a blueprint for the way you want to design your team, try and bring in some um, smart heads, eggheads, let's say, for lack of a better word. I know it's a bit of a cliche, but would you be looking to bring in that sort of talent now to your team to uh, have a collective hive to work on setups? Well, you want as much resource as possible, but I wouldn't use Midnight as a template because they weren't the first to do it as such. The first people that I ever saw do anything like this were the Precision Motorsports team, probably not so familiar in GPWC, but very familiar in the sim race world. They were the first team to me who said, well, possibly Twister Racing before that as well, teams that aren't familiar to GPWC again. They were the first teams, and even Torrent Motorsports, who do race in this league, they, they were a team that, a big organisation with a lot of drivers, a lot of resource. And our cameraman, Simon Mellowish, who, who runs the Torrent Motorsports team, uh, pretty much, uh, he, you know, he, was, he was another bloke who, who, who got everything together and things like that, and it was just, it worked, because you have, you have the resource to feed off, you have different opinions. It's not just one person doing all the work, as it, as it was at Drake, unfortunately. That's what it was like at Drake. Ryan Walker worked well with me, surprisingly. You know, we, 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 despite the fact that we didn't get on sometimes and we had arguments, we got on very well together. And it, we had a lot of resource sharing between us, and it worked well. And I hope our viewers don't mind us talking about things like this, but there really is no action on track whatsoever at the moment. The only action on track is Pavel Lutnoskin is showing, showing us how not to drive a Super League car at the moment. Um, but yeah... It, it, a resource, you need as much resource as possible and building a team up is quite a difficult thing because you've got to get the right people in the right place and obviously people like Midnight have done that very well this season. The only thing I would say, I, when I say I'm not as good at setups, I, I probably don't mean that in some respects as I don't know what I'm doing with the setups, but maybe this year there was something that you needed to put together on the setup what I didn't quite find. I, I know what the setup does and I'm sure you do feel you know what the setup does, you know what each individual thing possibly does and, and how it affects the car. But it's a combination of putting the things together, and that's what that's what people have found this year, I believe, in this mod. Because I could never find it. If you put some things together, they work brilliantly well. And you're gonna you're gonna keep that a secret, aren't you? Because it's your advantage. And we see in real life, Red Bull, things like that. You know, they will have advantage over someone else. McLaren might have an advantage somewhere else, but they wouldn't share it with anyone. They wouldn't say, "Oh, this is." Even if it was a flaw in the mod, or, or in, or, they wouldn't say anything about it. They, and, and and getting back to your point about when you know a mod's not going to suit you. I, I wasn't going to drive in the Masters this year, um, at one because I was banned last year by yourself, Phil. But uh, <laughs> which Water was justified, which was fully, <laughs> which was fully justified, by the way. But um, yeah, I wasn't going to race in the Masters this year because I'm not a GT driver. But I thought, no, I'll get a go and try and master it. And with Dave Carsmith's help, I, must, I can't say that enough. I, I say help. He's basically taught me everything I need to know about GTs and how to set them up. And suddenly I can be competitive. So again, it just shows you. It just shows if you've got the correct resource and the correct know-how and, and, and the knowledge, you can do it. Indeed, as we're now just a couple of laps from the end, I'm going to try and get the lap count right today. But I didn't when I was trying to commentate on uh, Wednesday night. Luckily, the um, audio never survived that one. We just had pictures, so that mess was um, avoided. But um, see, the gap is pretty steady now. I suppose uh, Lucas's tires are probably gone the way the dodo for him now. He's not going to. Really looking on James, although James is coming up, going, sorry, working his way through some lappers, although no dodgy ones through there. So he's uh, brought the gap down to Dave now. Of course, Dave's probably um, he's, he's probably waiting for you to call now, Lee, looking for uh, an offer as he's out there trundling around. Well, I won't say we haven't discussed being teammates before, that's for sure. So uh, people possibly need to watch out there. You never know in the crazy season of uh, silly season. Sorry. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, Lucas Heller has closed up. No, sorry, he's, he's lost a lot of oh, time Junt, now. Oh, Junt's off just ahead of uh, De Dave Carsmith. Ran on there at uh, turn 9. And he's trying to get it uh, turned around. Now, he should be okay. He don't doesn't seem to be any damage to the car. And um, Tom Parker's only just coming out of carousel now. But um, a little bit of late night late race drama. He just seemed to lock it up going in. Turned in. What car wouldn't turn as a... So he just went straight on, 
did a bit of a UE and um, back on his way. It looks like he didn't get any damage, so um, lucky, David Junt, lucky. Yeah, like you say, fortunate not doing any damage there because uh, it would ruin a really good drive if he had received damage and lost some positions. Still keeps that seventh position, but Dave Carr-Smith is on his final lap now. As we talk about uh, contracts and so on, you never know what's going to happen in the crazy world of, uh, of motorsport, let's say, and sim racing especially. Drivers seem to swap teams every week in the, in this league at the moment, but uh, yeah, certain drivers do too. <laughs> they, they do indeed. Yes, Dave Car Smith coming around the final few. Well, he's actually halfway through the lap now. The, there's no battle on track. Not one position is going to change. The only bit of action we've had in the last ten laps was uh, David Junt spinning. Uh, so we'll uh, we'll bring Dave across the line. It's been an action-packed race early on. The strategy's got us, and we've had a lot to talk about. And the good thing is we've had. A, hopefully, you've enjoyed the discussion me and Phil have had in the last ten laps or so. Anyway, to try and fill it in a bit. Um, Hopefully we've provided you with some uh, important information there and some tips as to how to become competitive. It's not about being fast in yourself always, it's about having the right people around you. As uh, Dave Carr-Smith now, breaking down from 210 mile an hour, pretty much 213 I think his top was, through the final few corners now. And he's pretty much dominated this uh, GPWC American Grand Prix. As he heads out the final corner now, Puts his foot down one more time. He'll be ecstatic with this win now. He comes across the line and wins the 2012 GPWC Simink American Grand Prix quite comfortably by 25 seconds from uh, James Shepard in second position. Dave Carsmith, another superb victory. Uh, I can't really praise him enough for that one. Out strategized everyone, out drove everyone. He had the pace when he needed it and did the job once again. James Shepard coming across in second position now. Good job by him as well. And uh, Lucas dropped off in the end there. Probably tyre related, I would have thought. And settling for third position, knowing it's doing his championship no harm at all. James seems quite happy with second position, though. Weaving the good as he comes across the line. So, I did expect more from him today, though, from James, but maybe not had the preparation he wanted. Lucas Lyle takes a solid third position. Nick Roller coming around the final few corners. Uh, and this is pretty much championship over for Nick, I would have thought by now. I, I mean, we saw today he let uh, Lucas by. So the mentality is now that Lucas will take this championship. And with a solid third position today, he's done himself no harm whatsoever. And we just have uh, we'll two more guys across the line who are still in the lead lap, which will be uh, Rude Heesterbeek and Simon Cattell. Uh, Cattell has actually c closed in on Heesterbeek in the last few laps. The gap is down to a second, but um, always, um, oh, sorry, not be a bit like on my part, but uh, Cattell looks to be running wide. It's going to the last corner. It won't matter, of course, because he is the last man in the lead lap. Everyone else is uh, one or more laps down. So that'll be the. Um, I mean, fifth and sixth, and then we've John did survive to uh, finish in seventh with uh, Tom Parker in eight, Mark Wicks marking three point scores in a row for um, one of GPVWC's veteran drivers. So great to see that for uh, Mark, and uh, especially given how the season had gone from so far. And Lewis Redshaw, and another important point for uh, Hawkeye in tenth position. We spoke with James before about how important is to get those points for the uh, team's championship. They have aims and everything that Lu Lewis can add to it helps. Uh, Matt Clip, unfortunately, missing out on the points in the left with um, Kieran Ryan and Mark Fuller, the last two f um, finishers. Pavel Oknowski had actually retired just after we had um, just spoken about me pulled into the pit stops and uh, retired with suspension damage. And leading a list of about five or six retirements with Oknowski, DeVos, both Norse out, both Winston's out, and Dale Stones and uh, Jeff Mead also retiring and um, Chris Williamson as well who actually never did actually do a lap yeah indeed uh, quite a lot of retirements today but obviously we didn't have as many uh, turnouts as well we had two teams missing today possibly two of the teams that are not going to be on the grid next year actually but obviously that's for another that's another time to discuss um, the guys just coming up into the commentary booth now the race winners and podium finishers and so on and we'll get around to them in a second I say a good story for Mark Wicks. He's become sort of the unsung hero, hasn't he, lately? I don't know why. It's, like you say, a veteran, possibly, but uh, for some reason he's just turned into like an underdog that we can all cheer on to a points position and once again doing a solid job today. Only one lap down in ninth position for Kerno Sport and also taking a double points finish with Cattell, his teammate, finishing sixth. But in the box, as we'll get onto the interviews, we have Dave Car Smith, we have James Shepard, we have Nick Rowland, and we have Lucas Euler. So the top four all in the box with us. Uh, so thank you for joining us, guys. We'll get onto Dave Car Smith straight away. And congratulate him once again on a superb victory and a well thought out victory, Dave. It was a bit unexpected, really, because I thought James was on a one stop. That's the only reason I was. Um, I originally planned to be on a two stop, but seeing his pace in free practice, I felt for certain that he was on a one. 
Yeah, you weren't the only one. We were very surprised, uh, and and the gap you've won by as well is really ominous for the rest of the season, let's say, and for future seasons to come. Um, we really expected James to provide more of a challenge to you today. I, I backed James for the win today, as you fully well know, um, and you said you'd try and uh, surprise me, and I think you surprised everyone. Well, yeah, he had the pace, as you saw when you put in that fastest lap, but I, once I got the pole, I just trimmed off a bit of the rear wing, and there was no way he was going to get past me after that, so I think had he got past me, it would have been a bit tighter, but track position was key. Well, today we saw Lucas pretty much uh, wrap up the title almost let's say because he, he's finishing third today that's brought him ever closer to the championship now um, your aim Dave must be second position in the championship yeah to try and catch Nick I'm not too bothered if you're not winning it who cares really I just want to get some more wins some more podiums wherever I end up I end up well you're doing yourself a lot of credit anyway with these wins you are taking so well done once again uh, any questions Phil I was just going to say, we talked to um, your team boss, uh, Christoph Lichtenstein, now during the broadcast, and he said you actually made a late call to change your strategy after qualifying. Um, was there any specific reason you decided to change that late, or was that part of the master plan? It was purely because of James. Um, as I say, I was on a two-stop, because I was on the option tyre in qualifying. Um, yeah, I saw James' pace in free practice. He did 20 laps with ease and was getting faster. So I figured he must be on a one-stop and I'd better react to that, so... That's why I was so slow in the beginning, because I was having to make the tyres last, you know, options for 24 laps. So I assume that's why you didn't fight uh, Lucas off so much when he made the overtake on you in the first few laps then? To an extent. I, I knew what strategy Lucas was on, and I knew that was probably not the strategy to be on today, so... I wasn't really battling him, I was battling James. Well, thank you very much for that, Dave, anyway, uh, for that insight. And uh, second position today, James Shepard. Uh, obviously, another consistent result, another podium finish. Not quite the result uh, we expected you to get today. We expected you to take the win, possibly, today, after the pace you've shown in the Nürburgring. Um, are you happy with the second position today? Yeah, why not? You know, I'm, I, th I think I'm going to be taking that forever the bridesmaid award off Nick, because <laughs> I seem to be staring at the back of Dave's rear wing for a lot of the the race and I intend to I assume for the rest of the season or at least he intends to but yeah I'm happy with second excellent I mean not taking anything away from that second position it's still an excellent result of course uh, we know now you guys are just battling for as many wins as possible um, do you think you can win any more races this season and, and like you say remove that bridesmaid uh, title uh, look I'd like to hope so and I've got my heart set on winning Suzuka I love the track and I really really hope to win there but you know, if I don't, I'm not going to be disappointed. Um, I've had an incredible run um, in the Super League. You know, I've never finished lower than fifth, so I can't complain. It's it's been a good run. And finally, from me, your aim for the rest of the season is it just like Dave's race by race? Yeah, just take it as it comes. Um, you know, today I wasn't quick enough. Um, like I had the track pace. I went for a higher wing setup than Dave and Lucas did, and demolished me on straights. And I I didn't think that I needed it. But obviously, I did made the wrong call. Didn't win the race, and um, I just hope to rectify those decisions in the future and, and plan a bit, a bit more. And um, yeah, maybe I can take a win here or there. Uh, any questions, Phil? Uh, I got one. Um, obviously, it's been a good week for you uh, so far. A well, good, two, good forty-eight hours. I was second here, and you won last night in the um, the Super Cup race. So. Um, it was a great result, team result also for Hawkeye. You must be thinking that um, fourth, even third now must be possible uh, with Norgen not scoring, Drake apparently um, off the beach somewhere and um, Red Archer while picking up a few points. Obviously we're missing OJ Clark here tonight. Do you, you think Hawkeye can take third in these last few races between yourself and um, Lewis? So it's going to be really, really tough. Um, plan A is to take fourth. Is is get Drake, and with them not being here now, I'll, we'll probably do that by next race. But um, in saying that, if Drake's not here, that's two other cars that can't beat Red Archer. So, uh, you know, uh, OJ will finish high. He, he's, he's been really good the last few races, so um, I don't think him not being here is going to be able to hold us off from, um, uh, we'll, we'll start, um, let us get ahead. Uh, I'm pretty sure they're going to be able to hold us off to the end, but we'll still go for it, for sure. 
Well, good luck in that quest, James, and uh, thank you for taking the time to come up here and well done once again on that second position. Uh, we'll move on to Lucas Euler, who today's finished third and solidified his championship position. Um, Lucas, uh, an interesting race. You tried a different strategy. Uh, didn't quite work out in the end, but you got a solid podium. Uh, talk us through it. Yeah, well, um, before the race, that was the question for basically for us at Midnight Moons for two stop or three stop. And I didn't really feel comfortable with the two stop fuel. I was making mistakes in some corners. Um, in the end, probably two stop, two stop would have been faster, but I felt more comfortable with the three stop. So I took that and um, it was, it was an okay race. I mean, uh, qualifying was apparently not, not as good. I didn't get the pole. It was my own fault. I didn't get a lap together, but, um, in the end, I'm looking also a bit to the championship, and it's quite close now, so I can't be disappointed. Yeah, you're not far from the championship, and one thing I was going to bring up, the next point was, uh, yeah, unfortunately your pole record was broken today by Dave Carsmith. Uh, we forgot to mention that to Dave, so well done on that, but uh, Lucas, uh, today you lost your pole run. Um, I expect you're slightly disappointed by that, but obviously the championship is more important. Well, actually, the last races I always aim for pole, and of course I'm a bit disappointed for that. But um, yeah, what, what can I do? I mean, I didn't get the lap together. Uh, James and especially Dave were faster, so uh, they deserved it. I just didn't get the lap together, so my fault. Their win and uh, deserve for them. So. Well, it had to happen sooner or later. You couldn't take every poll in the season. That would just be uh, unfair to everyone else. But uh, obviously, the last three races now coming up. Uh, you're in a very strong position in the championship. What's the aim for the last final few races? Just uh, three podiums, and that'll, that'll give you the championship pretty much. Well, from my calculations, uh, a podium in the next race would be enough. But um, <laughs> so I yeah, just try and get it done now in some of the last races. Yeah. Um, but I, I still want to win races or aim for the pole, especially. I mean, just because my run was broken, I still can collect some more poles, and uh, that won't be impossible. Uh, indeed, any questions, Phil? Um, one, well, I have to change slightly. I was going to ask him about whether he felt he was going to wrap up the championship next time in Interlagos. Like, I think it's uh, nine points is what you need over Nick in the next round, if I've done my own match right, although sometimes they are quite dodgy. Um, I will just slightly change that question though and say, um, do you think, obviously we've, we've seen that you seem to lack being able to battle out with um, Dave and James, he's on um, for raw speed, I mean you were what, four tenths off pole there, so do you think there's enough in the car to win any of the last races? Is there a particular race that you're looking at and thinking, yeah, we, we can we can take advantage of our car strengths and pick up another victory? Um, well, apparently, James and Dave both have incredible speed, especially over the, over the race distance. I'm not sure what they could have done if they tried some more qualifying laps, or if that was the maximum, and I was only one-tenth off with my last lap. But nevertheless, um, I could have gone a bit faster, so in quality speed, I might still be on the same level. In race speed, I'm, our car might be a bit slower now, um, but you never know um, how the race progresses. Like today, James couldn't get his strategy to work because he was stuck behind Dave, so uh, that, that can happen on any track soon. So um, I think we're going to struggle a lot in Suzuka. I'm not a big fan of Brazil. Uh, Singapore could, could be fun as the last race of the season. <laughs> Okay, and I think that's filled in with Lucas. Uh, so well done again, Lucas. And now on to Nick. Uh, Nick Rowland, who finished fourth today. Not too far behind his teammate. He had a different strategy to uh, his teammate as well. Two stops to three. Uh, Nick, we said uh, before the race, uh, obviously you were fifth on the grid, I believe. Uh, two places behind your teammate. And it was a good second in qualifying. We did say before the race that today, if you had any chance of taking this championship or any hope of taking this championship, you needed to do something special today. Uh, you tried a different strategy. Was that uh, was that an attempt to beat Lucas, or was it just you felt more comfortable on the two stop? Um, no, I just tried. I just tried something different. To be to be honest with you, more than anything, I tried to run the two stop that Dave and James have been very successful with for the past few races, and I wanted to see if our car was capable of achieving it. And I felt my, my first opening, sorry, my opening stint was pretty poor. 
and I lost way too much ground. But when I came out for my second and my third, I really started to build a rhythm with the car. And my pace was very consistent, not as quick as it needed to be to really make the two-stop work, but it was consistent. And that's the first time in a while where I've had consistency in the car and not a huge amount of tyre drop-off. But that, for me personally, was has been an encouraging sign. And even though I finished fourth, it's sort of a moral victory for myself because I'm not feeling terribly well either today. So to, uh, to achieve that it's actually feels better than the third place a few weeks ago. Okay, well, sorry to hear about uh, the fact that you're not feeling too well today, in, in which case that makes fourth place look even better. But uh, I was going to say, you've had a brilliant season. You know, you've really upped your game this season. You've surprised a lot of people, including myself and uh, many others. You've really taken the fight to the championship, um, which a lot of people probably wouldn't have uh, said you were capable of, and you've really outshone people's opinions. Unfortunately, the last, let's say, four or five races haven't really gone your way, and the championship has almost started to slide away. And I, I, I don't know, to me now it feels like it's almost gone, because today we saw, and Lucas came up behind you, even though you were on different strategies, of course, we saw you, and Phil did make this point as well, you were looking more for the team uh, after last race, let's say, when you felt pretty bad about uh, Lucas losing the win because you felt you battled him too hard. Uh, today, I was quite critical at one point uh, when you let him pass. That I was, ah, oh, he should be racing for the championship and so on. What's he doing and letting him by? And then Phil piped up and said, "No, he's thinking of the team, you know, and he's taking the the, the wider angle." And then I respected it. I sort of, I had a new respect. And I thought, yeah, he's he's a team player. He's thinking of the team. Is that your uh, your main focus now with the team, or have you, have you still got aims for the championship? After the last race, I realised that. I, I wanted to go for you know to battle to, to keep myself in contention, and I realised that had slipped away. Um, and I realised with the, obviously the differing strategies that when Lucas came up to me, he was still going to have to stop once more, um, and the tyres were, were at that point starting to drop off. I was hoping that I would able to stay, we would stay a little bit in touch, where we essentially would come out two three seconds apart. It turned out to be about seven unfortunately, because my tyres went off the edge uh, a lot faster in the second stint than they had done in the first, even though my first stint was slower on pace, so I'm not too sure what happened there. So I saw the fact that Lucas would need to essentially have clear track to challenge the guys in front, and I thought, there's, there's just no point in battling here, otherwise we'll, I'll, I'll compromise both of us. And I th that's why I thought there's just no point in that. I let Lucas go quite easily, to be honest. Well, okay, we... Well done anyway in the fourth position, like we say. Uh, it's, once again, it just shows, I mean, even though you didn't, like say, like say, battle him for that third position on track, it just shows the, the, de the in-depth teamwork that's going on at Midnight and why you deserve this championship so much. And obviously we know you're the team owner of Midnight and uh, we can only congratulate you on, on what you've done this season so far. And you can all be immensely proud of what you've achieved. Well, yeah, I'm definitely extremely proud of everything we've been able to do this season. And, OK, I, the title's pretty much gone now, and I've got to look over my shoulder towards where Dave is. But it's been an incredible season, and to, to have this off the back of what a rough season last season and to, to achieve what we have done is is phenomenal, really. really and I'm, I can't, I'm so proud of all these guys that I've got around me. Yep, congratulations once again. Uh, I don't believe Phil has any questions for Nick. That's a no. And, oh, my uh, good. <laughs> no, sorry, he's back. Uh, he doesn't have any questions for Nick. So uh, that's pretty much it. So thank you to all you guys for uh, turning up. That's Dave, uh, James, Lucas and Nick, the top four in the championship. Uh, well, sorry, the top four in the race today all turned up for an interview. So thank you very much. Uh, Dave, uh, just quickly back to yourself. Obviously, we've, all, we've said the uh, game is to win as many races as possible. I guess that's the aim for the next race. And uh, what, what would you reckon to be the closest challenge in the next race? I think Interlagos will be closer, because I don't think it'll hurt the Midnights as much. Um, Suzuka will definitely be James, because as, as Lucas said, I think they're just going to destroy their tyres. So, yeah, I think mostly it's going to be James and keep my eye on. Lucas may get something out of Brazil, but I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, thank you very much for that insight, and we will look forward to that race, I believe, in two weeks' time, same time as usual, on simrace.tv. Brought to you, uh, sorry, brought to you by uh, GPWC, Super League and Sim Inc. So uh, that pretty much wraps up the broadcast for tonight. We've had an interesting race early on. It tailed off slightly towards the end, unfortunately, when the strategies worked out. 
plenty of interesting points uh, that we talked about for the broadcast. Very interesting interviews, and we're all looking forward to the next time out. So uh, tonight we've had uh, Phil Cullen with me and Simon Mellish. So thank you, uh, Phil. Not quite sure if you're uh, there. Glad to be here. And I'm, no, I'm still here. Thanks. Uh, it's been a lot of fun tonight, and great to work with Julie. And just to remind everyone, obviously, like you said, that we've. Uh, the Brazil Super Cup and Super League in two weeks time and um, if you're interested in finding out more about us please visit us at uh, bpwc.com we are also on Twitter and we have Facebook so feel free to contact us there and get on the forum and join in the action okay our seasons here are coming down to an end but we've uh, a lot more planned over the winter months and getting ready for 2013 so feel free to join us anytime Indeed, very good plug there, Phil, and uh, thank you for your insight tonight. It's been invaluable. Really enjoyed working alongside you as well tonight. And a uh, big thank you to Simon Mellowish tonight, who's been our cameraman. Hopefully he's provided you with all the action on track that we've been talking about. And that's pretty much it. So uh, from, me, from myself, Phil, and Simon Mellowish, and all the other guys who joined us for an interview, it's good night. <laughs>